Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films, episode 10. Huddle It Up Live here on a Wednesday night. Just took my medicine, so I'm all good. Did not forget. <laughs> I have to take a drink of coffee soon. I got coffee tonight and a nice little Halloween cup. What do you think, Alec? That's pretty sick, dude. Not going to lie, I almost uh, pulled out my bass and tried to learn that little jingle at the beginning and come in like playing it because it's so catchy. I love it. Sweet. Well, the Cosmonaut Project, if he rears his beautiful head tonight, he can. He played the bass on there. That's a live bass, Alec. So uh, new computerized stuff there on Huddle Up Film for the Cosmonaut Project. That's what we <laughs> do. Is, uh, we have a Lazy Palooza, Alec, actually. So my buddy is an IT cosmonaut. His name's Chuck. And he takes off like two weeks, you know, two and a half weeks or something at the end of the year because he has a hard time using his paid time off because he is like the guy at his work. Mm -hmm. So Lazy Palooza at the end of December. And then, you know, we go from there. We will make a tune or two. Had my guy um, from City Boys Music, Casper215, DJ ATL from Twitter, give me a couple of beats. So we're, we're looking good in the beat category, Alec. Uh oh, technical. Right, can I go in and out on you? You I'm did. Seeing, I'm you... Seeing, yeah, I'm seeing that too. Oh, I know what it is, man. I got you. Sorry about that. That's all right. I mean, I'm kind of glad your camera doesn't look so good right now because it's always so much better than ours, and I get jealous. So we have some hellos here, Alec. Let's get to them real quick before we talk about Sergeant Garnett West behind his back. We have the man, simply AS10, into his house. Yo, what is up? Simply AS. He is all about his Skrilla, Alex. Skrilla, Skrilla, all about his Skrilla. He will make some big Skrilla one day for some kind of lucky team. Uh, what do you think about Simply's work, Alec? Oh, it's great, man. Sometimes I learn about things that happen in the NFL just by seeing his videos. It's like, oh, I didn't even know that happened. So you're always on the pulse of everything if you follow his yeah. channel. You know, the only videos I don't like when Simply posts, uh, he doesn't. He post injury videos, but I don't like that. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. So yeah, yeah. We have to have a long talk with him one day. Dawson in the house. Yer, yup. What's up, Scoot? Scoot. Black Daniels. Peace and blessings. Right back at you, man. Thank you very much. Wipe your feet and hit that like button. Definitely could use it. By the way, our promotional master and backbone of the show, Miss Ashley Priyanka, has power back. She is back home. Fingers crossed, Alec, next week, Ashley will be making her long-awaited return to the show. And, uh, you know, you'll be back in the Pat McCary role, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, I welcome it. I welcome it. I enjoyed watching the show as, like, uh, you know, a spectator. And uh, I'll be I'll be right back in the audience uh, tormenting you guys in the comments. How about that? Beautiful. No, we could use I love the comments. Juan Gotti in there. What up, bro? What's up, Juan? Appreciate you. And then look at this. Someone who... We were just talking about the Cosmonaut <laughs> Project. A friend, oh, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> the Hoagie Master. <laughs> so, uh, Chuck mentions your Hoagie every time we talk about football on the show. What do you have to say about your culinary sk skills there, Alec? I follow a lot of YouTubers that do cooking things, and I just mimic it. It comes out really well. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, yes, that's great news. Can't wait to have Ashley back. So, Alec, let's get into it. Some football we got some Marcus Peters film coming up later. That's going to be great. We have Gabe joining us for the uh, Giants preview. But Sunday, huge win, 19-17 to 17 over the Bengals. Can you please just talk about the win from an overall perspective, importance to this team and that kind of stuff? Just a huge win. Huge win. The Cardiac Kids did it to us again, but at least we came out with the dub this time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, just, you know, when they get, went up by one point and you knew all we needed was to get in range for Tucker, it took a single run by Lamar Jackson to have full confidence that we were going to make it happen. You, you knew he was in that win mode where he was going to just put on the Superman cape, get down there, get close enough, and then they bring out Tucker and there's really no doubt. Like I was more concerned about like externalities, like a block, a bad, you know, bad hold, all those things, not his leg. Everything went well and boom. You're victorious. I shed a tear too. I'll be honest. Like I was just so happy that uh, they won. You know, like, we we been let down so hard, down by uh, or only down for 14 seconds at home this year in the first two games, but losing both of them was just terrible, right? So 
yeah, it was good, man. It was good to get that win. And I imagine the team felt similar. I mean, they're more invested than we are, <laughs> you know, so I imagine it felt good. It did. It did. And, you know, it was like, especially, especially when Lamar threw the interception, that was the part that got me, not the interception, but what, what happened right after that. We're in control of the game. We're in control of the game, but the score is not crazy. We're not, we don't even have a lead like we did at Buffalo and Miami. Lamar makes a bad throw. And then what did the Bengals do? They just start running the ball right down our throats. Like nothing you can do about it. Here it is. Try to hit it. Mm -hmm. Threw us their best fastball. Drive down the field. We're missing tackles. You know, middle linebackers getting run over. All this other stuff. And it's like, oh, man, we don't miss the momentum. We just gave it back. We go into halftime. I think we were up by three, ten, seven, maybe something like that. And then uh, it just had that familiar sinking feeling. But um, I made a comment on Twitter. Would like to get the people's comments down here. Like this, this game for Lamar Jackson shows exactly how special he is. And I think he will be like this for another five years. Like people think he's past his prime. He's still only twenty or getting past his prime soon. He's still only twenty five. Uh, you know, he's going to be fast for a long time, Alec. Let's let's yeah. not act like we'll forget how to run the ball. So Lamar can't locate his pitches, re, re, like uh, comparing it to baseball. You know, his slider's off, his curveball's off, his fastball, he left up in the zone, and he hit a couple of meatballs after him. Yet when the game was on the line, another two-minute drill from Lamar Jackson to win the game uh, with help, big assist from Justin Tucker, using his legs, going to Mark Andrews. And it just goes to show you that even when Lamar is off, he can still find a way to win the game. And it makes him special among other quarterbacks who can't who can't do it like that. Yeah, I mean that's that's why he's gonna get paid, honestly, is his ability to win games. Stats are one thing, uh, but just his a way to like take over a game when he absolutely needs to is honestly up there with any other quarterback in the league. So Tucker's game winner was actually my second favorite kick. Next to the 58 yarder he made. <laughs> the game winning kick was cool because they came out with all the stats about the coordinates, and basically he would have made it if the field goal uh, was a half yard wide, which is like a foot and a half. So, all right. So, if the field goal post was basically a football wide, trying to get my hands even, he would have yeah. made that field goal. He would have made that, that really field goal. Cool. <laughs> but when he nailed a 58 yarder, and if you did you see the replay because you were at the stadium, he was like, Oh, I was seeing him do it right to us because he he did it to that sideline. And uh, yeah, it it was awesome. Like, I enjoy when people can back some boastfulness. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like more fun. Like, I remember the Legion of Doom, like, or uh, Boom, rather, when they would, like, get an interception and they'd be all full of themselves. It's like, because they were dominant that year. It was kind of cool. Like, I like that. Like, I think it's fun when they have that swagger. and And that man has top swagger. Yeah, wise man named Kid Rock, Alec. He once <laughs> said, "He once said, you say I'm cocky, and I say what? It ain't bragging, boop boop, unless you back it up. <laughs> so uh, uh, if you back it up, uh, sorry, Kid Rock, I messed it up. You, you got cuss words in there that I had to beep beep out. But uh, <laughs> it ain't bragging if you back it up, Alec. And that man does a lot of talking, and and he backs it up. And I'm nervous on every hold this year. I'm like a Jordan Stout hawk, like." I'm watching that snap and that hold every single time. Thank goodness. Thank goodness they both came through. So, yeah, Lamar Jackson, um, what are your thoughts on the offense, the offensive line? Let's just jump into a general thought from Alec. I know you've talked about this game at length already. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought the offensive line looked okay. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's hard to talk about without talking about Stanley. I thought he looked great, and I am – looking forward to him getting more and more of a role. If JK Dobbins is any indication, this could be a several week long process of things ramping up during Harbs's presser today. Someone asked him about, you know, the field conditions at MetLife and the pitch counts and like, what we can expect. And he's like, you're putting together a lot of dots here, uh, but I don't think I'm going to come <laughs> any further. Kind of like wake an eye that, yeah, there's still going to be more of a pitch count. Um, and that's, I mean, I guess it is what it is. McCarry definitely had one of his worst games uh, coming, I guess, coming back from that injury. So maybe it's not fully healed, um, but it was also, you know, a difficult opponent. So I'll keep an eye on that as well. Not that I don't think it was a fall off the table game, but I definitely think it was one of his worst games we've seen at uh, left tackle. It was a tough assignment too. Trey Hendrickson almost always on that side of the left. 
they really play sides in Cincinnati with their edge rushers. They don't move them around like the Ravens have always done, where they find that mismatch. Um, maybe not since the days of Suggs. But, but yeah, man, like uh, Stanley looked good. 22 snaps. So it wasn't really uh, even like a half a game. He kind of was in there, out, in, out, in, out, and then sat for the rest of the game. I was a little concerned, Alec, that he re-injured it or whatever. So thankful to see that it was just part of the plan. And he's going to get some practice time off, and I agree with you. I don't I don't think he's going to see a full game for weeks. I think it's going to you – know, if he had 22 snaps uh, this week, maybe he has 28 next week, this coming week, and then maybe he bumps it up to 30, and then – Maybe he takes a um, you know after halftime or something like that, but he's it's going to take him a while to ramp up. But we are a much better line. Like Ronnie Stanley himself, film is out on the channel of Ronnie Stanley. Almost got a thousand views already. He looks like himself, Alec. Like the movement really struck me, um, especially when Trey Hendrickson was crossing his face and he had to put a little power to his movement. Like he's moving out, he's moving around out there really, really great. Even if the strength and all that other stuff takes a while like this is i want to say alec it, it looked like ronnie stanley you know what i mean it wasn't a shell of them they, they looked like the same damn player yeah and that was always the concern what percent of ronnie stanley we're going to get back and it definitely seemed like that first time he pulled and i was watching him i was like that looks good that looks good and then he you know finished the block and and yeah i i was very very pleasantly surprised because we waited so long, but in a way, maybe we should have expected it. We waited long enough that they weren't going to put him out there until he was really ready to be Ronnie Stanley, which they said for the whole time. And it seems like they weren't lying. You know, coaches lie all the time, but apparently that one was true. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't help it, Alec. It's been almost oh, two I know. years. I lied too. <laughs> yeah, we're lying to ourselves. Like, oh, Ronnie's good. Uh, you know, and I was, I was really holding my breath without with all this. But yeah, what a great sign. And then. Ben Powers has played above expectations. Linderbaum's played above expectations. Zeitler's been just as good as he always have. Morgan Moses hasn't really played as well as we expected, and he hasn't been a liability either. So you look at the times Lamar's been hit, the most times Lamar's been pressured, all those things that just drove us nuts last year with Villanueva and Phillips and all that. Like, we've really cleaned that up. Our run, our run blocking can get better. But from a protecting the passer, Alec, I don't think you can. I don't think you can ask for much more than what we've got already to start to see. Even file Lele, Alec. Oh yeah, and I was listening to Ken's show earlier today, and he was talking about um, like he got him pulled back the curtain a little bit on his grading system and how he weighs passing plays heavier than running plays. And I think that makes sense, like given the fact that the passing game is the more high leverage plays and all that good stuff. Like it's good to see. Like if I had to pick a side, I'd rather us have a better. Um, pass blocking game than run blocking. But uh, I do believe that this unit could have elite run blocking. It's just, it's it seems like it's going to take some time this year. Yeah, especially with yet another back. And you see what difference J.K. Dobbins makes already. Just him, like, even though J.K. Dobbins isn't 100% physically yet, I think we can tell his burst isn't quite where it was, change of direction and all. Mm -hmm. But he's just a good running back, Alec. There's an art to play in the position. Like JK's smart. He's still got great balance. He can see he's got great vision. He can see when a hit's coming. Kind of just slide these little things that don't measure in a 40 time. Like and the timing with the line uh, is was what I'm getting at too. But he makes your line better run blockers by just his patience, knowing when to go, when to hold them, when to stop, when to give them extra time. JK Dobbins, Alec, hell of a running back. Yeah, he's excellent. And the run play where he looked like he got stuffed for maybe one yard and then just like rolls and somehow magically gets nine to 10 yards is the quintessential play of his patience, his contact balance, his ability to make something out of nothing. Like you get that guy back in. I imagine when we see the Gus bus back, it'll be similar. And it's like, Oh yeah, there's a reason why when the Ravens ran the ball in the past, they would always get at least a couple yards. And it was because these backs are just phenomenal with their vision, phenomenal at finding just any little bit of leverage they can get to move forward. And we were missing that for a year. Yeah. And I remember Gus Edwards, people in the comments might remember too. It was like almost two years he went without taking a rush for a loss. Right. Like every single time it was like zero was the worst, worst. Loss. It never took a run for loss for two years. We have one of our leaders, one of my favorite yeah, people. Sorry. And, 
get this, Alec. I was uh, tweeting with Yolanda during the game. You were too, right? It was me, you, yeah, 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 Garnet. Yep, yep. Yeah, I went and found Yolanda and had to add her in because I needed some Yolanda feedback. And like, my wife was working, my son had his girlfriend over, my other son was over at his friend's house. So I'm sitting here watching the game by myself. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to rely on some of my guys and girl on this one. So, yeah, Yolanda, I hope you enjoy tweeting with us during the game. I really appreciated that. And Mr. Yuri stopping by. Man, he's got to stop having these dates on Wednesday nights. Yeah. What a burden for Yuri. You know what, what I mean? Like Same girl or different girl. That's what we need to know. Put that same in the girl. <laughs> girl. And we don't discriminate, Yuri. If it was a guy, you could tell us too. Which it's okay it's too. all good. Yeah. Love it's who you good. love, bro. Love who you love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, only Yuri can complain about too many dates uh, <laughs> during the Huddle It Up film show. That was a humble. Honestly, way I think it's up. a little disrespectful though that he scheduled dates during the show. I mean, that's I mean, how do you feel about that, brother Jay? <laughs> he well, has a date with us, and he just is like, nah. <laughs> they can I feel wait. Like he's, he's using my show as an excuse to mention that he had a date. I think so. He, I think he, so. He, that's that's a wise man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, you ever think he said, "Hey, baby, not tonight. Uh, I gotta watch Huddle It Up films." Like, I don't, I don't see that being. She's like, what channel is that on? And it's like uh, his YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, and we got, we definitely got um, different girls. Different. So. Oh, spicy! Yeah. Which one's yeah, better, Alex. one or two? <laughs> Put it in the Alex. comments, <laughs> Alec. Leave it in the comments, Alec. Yeah, <laughs> Mister International. Hey, Black Daniels is in there. Sorry, Yolanda clicked the wrong one. Different girls. And Mr. International Yuri. That was the one I was trying to get to. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yolanda said she enjoyed the game tweets. Me too. If I'm ever available, I'm, I'm tagging you and seeing if you're out there. Um, and yeah, big pimping from Yuri. No, no, no doubt about it. So Alec, you know, time flies at the beginning of the show before we get to the film study. I know it's like, we're almost there. It's crazy. We're almost there, dude. Like you, you know, I almost, I should stop writing the show sheet for the first half hour because it's just like i came that day i'm like we're just going to start talking um yeah. one thing i want to get into though okay here's a hot topic so raven suffered a really tough injury i mean christ bro we we signed morgan moses he's still playing but we signed marcus williams he's out for a long time we yeah. signed kyle fuller he's out for the year uh and we signed who else did we sign michael pierce out for the year Correct. we can't even like raid edc's free agent signing bro. it's like anybody we sign is going to get hurt and miss time bro like so frustrating you want to speak on that first i'm sorry no you're fine and um i think we'd be remiss to forget about uh the guy i can't remember his name right now but the outside linebacker um means well means and no, no, the other one <laughs> the one before him remember that <laughs> there's another one it's oh, beagle it's beagle. beagle yeah yeah there you go <laughs> All these guys are getting hurt for the year. It's wild. And we they never got to play real snaps, really. So it's for us to remember. Uh means maybe they got a few, but yeah. Beagle was out before it even started. So yeah, super disappointing. Obviously, the wild thing about Williams is they can't nail down what play he got hurt on, and he played with the injury, yet he's gonna be gone for a while. I think oh, I you got think it. You, know? you figured it I out? Think, yeah. He's such a tough SOB though, bro. Like <laughs> It was a running play in the second quarter, first and 10 from like the 28. And he had to come up to support on this tackle as usual. We're not sealing the edge. And he had to reach in and it was kind of awkward. And I'm like, oh, that could be it. And he like looked down at it and looked back up and that was it. And I'm like, well, that's probably not it. And then later on that drive, if you remember, he had the when when they scored the touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, he like kind of got in on Hayden Hurst, but like really did look like he didn't give it 100 percent. I think that's when they knew it's broke. We got to get him out of the game because he can't tackle. We got to get an x-rayed. So I think uh -huh. it happened before that tackle. You know what I mean? Like before it didn't happen on the tackle. I think the reason he didn't go in for the tackle. Again, I'm not going to put suspected injuries up there, but tough SOB played through it. So Alec, Geno Stone came in, um, you know, and I have a theory that, you know, Geno was the backup for Kyle. Geno was the backup for Chuck Clark. Geno was the backup for Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams gets hurt. You can leave Chuck doing what he game plan for all week. You can leave Kyle doing what he game plan for all week. And he just put Gino in with whoever got hurt, which was Marcus in this situation. Mm -hmm. But it leaves a great question coming forward. Kyle Hamilton was drafted so early because he can play true free safety as well as the box, like mm -hmm. versatile safety. So how did the Ravens handle this 
in this extended absence with Marcus Williams, considering Kyle has the upside there, but he's also made the mental mistakes. We outlined some on the show. Yeah. So I, we talked about it on our show about how it was kind of interesting to peel back the curtain where stone basically gets no snaps on defense when everyone's healthy and they let Hamilton take some of these situational plays. And then the second someone's hurt, it's all him and Hamilton stays in his role. Nothing changed. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it, particularly from a break glass perspective, because he wore the green dot before he knows the defense really well. He can probably step in and fill in those roles, particularly better than the new guy in Hamilton. And and for that reason, it makes a lot of sense. But like we talked about, now that they're game planning with this known injury, known hole, how might it change? I would be very disappointed to see Hamilton not take on more of these snaps with this opportunity. Now, could he, you know, waste the opportunity, have some miscommunications, uh, make mistakes, and lose playing time for sure? But I think this week we will see more Kyle Hamilton and, uh, it'll be more of a committee with stone because they have the whole week to prepare for it. Whereas last week, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, stone was just, he's been here long enough. He he's cerebral enough to know it all, not to take it away from Hamilton, but he's just newer. So that that's my hunch. You know, I, I agree with you. I think a, a team like the giants who just runs the ball, I expect us to be pressed up, loaded up in the box and not have to play two deep safeties that, by the way, Joe Burrow had a lot of trouble with and has this year. So wonder if the league has quote unquote figured out Joe Burrow. Remember all that Lamar stuff, um, <laughs> you know, and Joe Burrow can't all of a sudden beat cover two defense. So I'm looking for more like single high safety where you just got a guy in the back end. Alec, basically what this means is he covers the whole back end and he doesn't have, he's not working in tandem really. He's just looking for who's beat deep and then goes and supports that the deepest of the deep type thing. I think Kyle can handle that kind of stuff. I would like to hear, um, you know, opinions here. Um, Black Daniels weighing in. Thank you, bro. Um, Kyle is young, but still next man up. Gino has been in the system, so he's the point man leading the way for the youngster. I agree, man. I agree. So Black Daniels and everybody else, if you had to say who's taking more snaps this week, Gino or Kyle, give me one word in the comments, Gino or Kyle. I would like to hear what you have to say because I'm surprised Alec is saying what he's saying because he's agreeing with me, and I had some pushback when I brought it up on Twitter. I think Kyle's going to see more snaps this week. I really do. I think that the Giants are the team for it, that they don't have the receivers to really threaten you downfield and really conflict. They don't have the quarterback, the receivers, the passing attack. It's all about stopping Saquon Barkley. So I could see Kyle getting broken in the slow way, uh, that way, Alec. And mm -hmm. uh, sounds like you agree with me, but they they probably will mix and match like they do at all, all positions, though. You know, it's not going to be either or, right, Alec? I don't think it'll be either or, and I'm curious – if there will be a tell, I hope that there's not a tell, but maybe that on more passing or more running downs or whatever, they bring in uh, Hamilton just because of his build uh, versus stone. But I don't know. Like, I, I really hope there's not a tell. I hope it's just some maybe hell. Maybe it'll be like by series. I would, it wouldn't totally shock me. I would be, I'd be I think that's the suboptimal way of handling it, but like, it wouldn't totally shock me. All right, great. So, Hey, I asked for it, the crew delivering. Yolanda B says a little more of Kyle. Um, simply AS, heart says Kyle, mind says Gino. You know, Alex, yeah. I feel you. I feel you on that, bro. You know, yeah, I feel too. you on that for sure. Uh, Black Daniels says Kyle. Um, and Yuri says Gino. Uh, by the way, um, Yuri also says in his defense, he was within 10 minutes of joining each time. Not sure what that – I'm going to just let, let that one fly, but good job being quick with your dates, I guess, Yuri. Um, and Yuri, extend, I want it to be Kyle, but Harborough style screams Gino. Alec, comment on that, bro, because that, that hits home with me right there. Yeah, I mean, Harborough wants to win. It's kind of like the same syndrome with Pickett, where they didn't bring Pickett in right away. And um, in Pittsburgh, they want to win these games. I think maybe like one of the guys who has a lower ceiling will help them win better right now. But the change will happen, right? And I think it's a little different for us. For you know, It's not the quarterback decision. And also there was, I don't know, the quarterback thing was just stupid, in my opinion. They should have put him in from the get-go because they weren't going to win games with, uh, <laughs> with Trubisky in there. But it is what it is. Yeah. They figured it out. 
No, it's a good analogy, though, not just with the Steelers this year, but you see it with rookie quarterbacks who come in. You know that rookie, highly drafted rookie is going to start by the end of the season. Like I'm waiting, I mean, look like at I'm, Lamar, right? We were, I was, at least I was banging the bell. I was like, dude, he is dominating when it's 10 on 11 because Flack is out there doing nothing. I'm like, imagine what he'll do when it's 11 on 11. <laughs> and then he did, and it was magical. And then he had 2019. Like, yeah, sometimes you can just see it. And sometimes these veterans have like quote unquote earned playing time, but sometimes the kids are just better. So, yeah. Like, like Troy saying here, plus Harbs doesn't put rookies out there like that. Usually. I mean, you're right, Troy. I don't, I don't know what, what it is that just, I think it's the game plan and the opponent this week that just says to me, bro, they're just going to look at these giants receivers and say, we're going to press up at the line of scrimmage. These dudes can't even get off the line of scrimmage on us. Nevertheless, get open. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? We're not going to have to play two safeties deep. We're not going to have to have a lot of communication back there. Mm -hmm. Just real simple. Just guard your man and, and dominate them. So maybe, Alex, that Alec, that's why I feel like, you know, I'm feeling optimistic on the Kyle Hamilton, giving him a chance. You know, and I look at the Saints the week after, and if Chris Olave isn't out there, it might be more of the same. But, uh, but, but yes, dude, the cornerbacks, we are going to take a look at the cornerbacks you know, I should have put Marlon in this cut up too because he had a few plays on the ball and away from the ball that were really good. But two strengths of this team, man, the outside corners. If we could ever get some kind of coverage in the middle of the field, which was much better in this game, I mean, difference maker Patrick Queen with the interception, uh, put out film of Pepe who played almost the whole game. He played well. Uh, he was guarding Chase a lot. If you noticed in that cut up, Alec, if you guys go back and watch the Pepe Williams cut up. When they moved Chase to the slot, they left Pepe Williams on him, which when it was happening during the game, I'm like, no, do not. Don't do that. So I'm switch with Marlon. Do some bring Brandon Stevens in, whatever you got to do. But, um, you know, Pepe played well. But Marlon and Marcus, bro, before we get to the Juice Man film, it's just like it feels like the first time. It feels like the very first time. Like that song. <laughs> when we got Marcus and we had two ace cornerbacks, bro, on the outside, it's just like, yes, thank goodness. Yeah, it's it's really good. Like, I think uh, Alex said it earlier, where we're seeing these more more pieces come back online. Even with the Williams injury, we we see Ojabo practicing, we see Bowser practicing, we hear that uh, the Gus Bus is practicing. Like some of these other pieces from last year or, or the draft process are starting to come online, and they're not just trivial players. They're not like they're going to be playing a significant amount of snaps the moment that they're available. And they ramp up. So, you know, all that. But these guys are real deal. And it makes you excited. And nothing's more exciting than getting an elite cornerback and being able to pair him with Marlon, pair him with the safety commas that we have. And I mean, that it, it irks me so bad when these fancy hounds are like, they're playing the Ravens. They're going to get a lot of yards. It's like, have you watched anything? Like, at least Sunday night, did you watch it? Like, do you think that they that the Bengals now magically suck and like our team it was an anomaly? It's like no, our secondary is awesome. We had a bad game, a bad game and a half that's eroding our stats. Like, come on, like it's just and or you have Joe Flacco throwing sixty times. Like, you know, <laughs> eventually you're gonna get some yards out of that. So it just kills me. It's it's lazy analysis, and I'm excited for this defense. You got some upside, bro. Garnett, uh, this is ESPN, courtesy of Sergeant West, who, by the way, came on the show one time today to say that. <laughs> know, right? he had to go, yeah, he's on time, but he leaves to go pick up his daughter. So um, he'll be back from daddy duty very soon. He but said right down some, the street. Uh, it's a very long street. <laughs> it's 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 Garnett, bro. Garnett tells you he's going to be gone for 10 minutes. It's going to be 30, bro. That's just the way Garnett roll, roll, rules, bro. That's, that's, I just that's, messed with you, Garnett. Yeah, so look at how close this game was, though, uh, Alec. Uh, total yards, yep, pretty much even. Turnovers, even. Time of possession within one second of being perfectly even. That's crazy. First down, yeah, first downs, 22 to 20. Um, it was just a crazy even game all the way through. But again, Lamar Jackson, Justin Tucker, the difference in this game. But yeah, having those two lockdown corners – while we before we get into juice Dan, juice man while I load it up, talk to us about Devin Duvernay, the way we're manufacturing this guy touches and how valuable he's been to the offense because it's been just such so nice, so nice. 
it's about time, right? Like we were calling for this all last year and apparently took a whole off season to install, <laughs> but it's been great. Like maybe they were just uh, trying to get those draft picks. You know, they were trying to lose. They just, they were putting up a good fight, but they, they deep down wanted to lose. But yeah, dude, it's awesome. Like he was a true running back for one play. They gave him a toss play. Like it wasn't even motion. It was just, I'm lining up as a running back. It was awesome. And I love the fact that he's been able to pull out these crazy plays, be it the deflection against the Bills, the fumble against his thigh, or, you know, the bad snap into his thigh, picks it up and makes like a 10 yard gain out of it. Just ludicrous stuff like that. Super valuable. Obviously, always been valuable as a returner, gained that offensive spark. And I am pleasantly surprised with his development because I never quite saw it. I just, I just didn't. I thought that he could do some of the things that we're seeing him do now. But he's doing that and more. So that's what's really impressive to me. It sure is. So somebody that's really impressive to me is Marcus Peters. And right. man, can we just can we just sign this extend this guy? We just I think they him. are going to because that opens up some cap space to do some shenanigans at the trade deadline. And if they think they're contenders, we've seen the EDC every year when he thinks they're contenders pull shenanigans. So what's what is it going to be this year? Is it going to be DJ Moore? That'd be cool. Is it going to be somebody else? I don't know, but I think, I think an extension for Juice Man and a shenanigan is in order, and it's coming soon. All right, you heard it from Alec, <laughs> and I, I hope so because people are worried. Well, what if he doesn't get his speed back? He's a cornerback. I mean, you'll see in this clip, it's not about speed for him. He relies on his speed probably less than any cornerback I've ever seen because he just knows what's coming. And he's one step, two steps ahead. If other yep. people are one step ahead, Juice Man's two steps ahead, and then there's something else. That's his play style. And today, Lamar Jackson was asked, hey, you're an offensive guy. We all get pumped up about Juice, man. Does it pump you guys up too? So let's go uh -huh. ahead and listen, start the film study with some Lamar Demetrius Jackson. Defense feeds off of uh, Marcus Peters when he makes a big play and he gets excited on the field. Does the offense, is the same thing for you guys? Do you guys get excited by him as well? Oh, absolutely. You know, that's that's – when our leaders of the team, you know, um, a lot of us look up to him, including myself, you know, the MP. Um, and when he's out there doing what he do, you know, we all get ecstatic on the sideline, you know, and we tell him about it after the game. So there you go. They all get ecstatic on the sideline. It's yeah. not just you and me and the fans, bro. Lamar himself looks up to him and gets pumped up when Marcus Peters makes a play. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, he's just – and he has that swagger, too. We're talking about Tucker and his swagger. Juice Man has all that swagger, and we'll see it, I'm sure, in this cut-up. Oh, yeah, bro. I got – you know, usually <laughs> I try to cut the uh, film close to, you know, follow the guidelines, but in this one, I wasn't exactly a, a good boy, bro. Like, there's a little celebration, some pushing and shoving. By the way, Hayden Hurst, uh, for a man that got dominated most of the night, he sure was uh, happy with himself, Alec. Yeah, you know, good for him. Yeah, he's been through a lot to be on that field. Uh, he's allowed to, I guess, have some fun. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's fun. The thing that kills me, too, is he's like the one guy in the league that wears like the midriff version of the jersey. You know what I mean? He's like always trying to show off those abs. It's like, we know you're in the NFL. Like, by definition, you have abs. Even if you're a huge lineman, you have abs underneath all that. <laughs> so, Alec, I'm going to give you a challenge. You know, Garnett yeah. will be back on the show. And Ashley will be back on the show, fingers crossed, next week. So when you right. come back on, bro, wear the midriff. Let's see the abs. What do you say? <laughs> what abs? <laughs> I'm gonna need a whole. I'm gonna need an off season too, just like Giro needed to figure out how to use Duvernay. I'm at least need an off season for that. <laughs> yeah, look, hey, that you, your vault can slowly creep creep open, bro. At least get like a four pack to start off there. All, all right, right, so all right. Let's, let's get into it, Juice Man. Juice Man always on the left. Um, that's another thing that I think why Marlon struggled last year, moving from the left to the right, to the slot, to the here, to the there, to following this receiver. Marcus is going to be on the left side of the defense. Marlon's going to be down here on the right. And here it is. This is early in the game. It might be the first play of the game, Alec. And uh, let's just watch how fast Marcus Peters diagnoses this play and closes. Wow. I mean – it really strikes you when you see it in fast motion. This will be like 75% motion or whatever. But, you, I mean, dude, you like Jamar Chase is a tough tackle. If you don't close on him like that, you're going to get dragged, um, especially with coming back from a knee and what do you have, a, a quad injury this week that he played through? 
I mean, bro, he is anticipating them trying to feed the ball to Chase. And those are just the instincts. You can tell first down, he's not moving. Next play right here, he's going to come up, say hello. Mm -hmm. And that allows the sack to get home. So he disguises it. He's off like he normally is. And he's going to say, you know what? I'm coming up. I'm going to jam this man at the line of scrimmage. There's really nowhere to go with this ball. Burrow is looking elsewhere, tries to go through his progressions, but JPP. But that just goes to show you how physical and crafty he is, Alec. Like, he trusts himself to come up at the last minute and just really ruin your day when he wants to. Yeah, and, and when you talk about him always being lined up on the left-hand side, I wonder if that is even more uh, a position of – of speed necessary because if you think about it with right-handed quarterbacks, they drop back. That's like straight in front of them. It's not crossing their body. If they're going to the left-hand side or uh, yeah, I guess, I guess they're left-hand side. So yeah, I guess, uh, you know, he needs that speed a little bit more. Yeah. A lot of times he'll be playing in tandem with someone over there. This was the opposite. It's strong side left. You see the weapons. So uh, he's actually the X he's guarding the X receiver on this, Alec, the formation is switched. If you look, uh, the strong side is where all the people are, is the easy way to put it. Right. So you see three Bengals receivers to the left uh, of their offense, to the right of our defense. Their strong side left, um, Marcus Peters on this play, is actually guarding what would be considered the X receiver by himself. So that's why, like, um, you know, guys like Marlon, who usually cover that right side, they're the ones that usually have the speed. But with Marcus and Marlon, uh, Alec, again, two number one corners. It doesn't matter, bro. You want to put Chase up there on Marcus? All right, we're comfortable. You want to put Chase down there on Marlon? All right, we're comfortable. So, again, the flexibility comes in comes into play with them. But I love how comfortable he is. I mean, that's a vet, bro. You won't see rookies doing stuff like that, you know, afraid to mess up. You know, oh, I want to make sure I get my jam right at the line of scrimmage. Let me get up there and do it. Marcus is like, no, I'm going to time this snap. I know when the snap's coming. It just change the entire release of the receiver on that play. Yep. Really cool. No, it's just just crafty and cool, bro. All right, here we go again. This, I believe, he drops in a short zone, but watch his eyes, ready for the dump off on Mr. Hurst, and then decides to dump him into the band. You can see he gets the <laughs> Ravens band all fired up. But again, he's got responsibility. That's Jamar Chase next to him. He's got to make sure he takes care of that. Mm -hmm. But the instincts to recognize the screen pass and then close the sideline has never missed a tackle, Alec. You've heard of that that saying before, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a good saying. It's true. To watch him stick with Chase, come up, force Hurst to the outside, and then put a little oomph on it, bro. Like, you ain't going to bully me. I don't care how big you are, Hayden Hurst. Um, this is our night. I'm going to show you how physical I am. Marcus, remember you got the one penalty for punching Chase in the face off the line of scrimmage? I don't know if you saw that, but uh, <laughs> he was really, really fired up in this game. Yeah, okay. he was. Go ahead. Bottom side of the field. This is a rare uh, rare thing where he got beat, um, but yet still the timing. You're not going to see any pass interference out of Marlon or out of Marcus. He's going to take his time. So he underestimates. Uh, I think that's Mike Thomas there, who's usually a slot-type receiver. Uh, doesn't usually run those kind of routes. It caught Marcus by surprise. He was still able to keep his composure. Little catch-up speed right there. Throws a little underthrown, but really the receiver ran out of room. Mm -hmm. yeah and maybe like that was part of the decision making process for him okay ball's not out yet he's probably gonna you know turn back towards the quarterback and he kept going backwards and the ball was he had to throw it away that he could make either catch up or he's gonna go out of bounds so maybe that's just an additional you know cerebral part of his game where he knows where he is on the field and, and what it takes for the quarterback to get there yeah and a calm it's cerebral and calm like we saw Kyle Hamilton get a little juiced up and hit hit Aiden Hurst early, and it almost cost us the game down there. You know, if, if a rookie or something like that, maybe he panics and swats at the arms early or sure, something yeah. like that, you can easily get pass interference on a play like this. Marcus just knows that number 80, Mike Thomas, ain't the football player he is. Uh, I got beat, but I'm going to catch up, and yep, see you later, son. Like, that's the most calmest recovery. You can see, Alec, like, if Marcus Marcus was, for all intents and purposes, beat on that play, never panic, doesn't even look worried, and cockily shoves him out of bounds, bro. Just just a, yet another reason why I love Marcus Peters, man. Yeah, 
he's hard not to like. I remember when we first got him, some people were worried about his character and everything, and he's been nothing but fun. And I know that there was that, you know, scuffle on the sideline or whatever, but I think that's just that's Marcus being Marcus, but not in a bad way. You know, he just he cares more than a lot of people. Right. Yeah, he cares. He wants to win. He wants stuff done right around him. You can tell that. The hardball mm-hmm. makes up. It doesn't matter if it's hardball. Doesn't matter if it's the kicker. Doesn't matter if it's if the quarterback or the last guy on the practice squad or the middle linebacker that we've seen. He dude, he he will hold you all accountable the same and speak to you the same. And yet he will show you all the same respect. Like you see the way he messes with Justin Tucker, bro, and just has that affection for him too. It's like Marlon treats I mean Marcus treats everybody the same. And I love it. He's the same no matter where he is. Media and everything else, you gotta earn his respect, man. So let's see him. He's pressed up on Jamar Chase here. Um, one-on-one, top of the screen. You see that man coverage? I mean, there's bro, there's nowhere to go with that ball. Um, Burrow decides that his only chance is to throw a back shoulder. And Chase is so covered that he's not even looking for the ball. So one-on-one, top of your screen, that's what you want, right? One-on-one with Jamar Chase. That's what you're looking for. You take that every time if you're the Bengals. Um, yeah. And – it was just different from this game, you know, having to deal with these two corners being there, the improved safety play, even though the Williams didn't play the whole time. Just this defense, I think, is a better defense top to bottom, every aspect of it than it was last year. And yeah, they did not have the same luck. And I just thought the most beautiful thing about this whole approach was that they kept everything in front of them. We saw one of those first plays, you know, he's respecting, um, chase in the zone but is able to diagnose the balls going under and he's able to then break on the ball make it for a nominal gain and it's not going to be with the play that beats him yeah you remember how last week i would put up the different skills that brandon stevens displayed and that kind of thing yeah this it's just like the same thing over and over again it's just perfect cornerback play like he mirrors perfectly there look at his mirror his release off the line of scrimmage I mean, bro, he's basically, it looks like they're almost doing a uh, synchronized dance. Look at him. Look at her feet. <laughs> it's amazing. Right. Look at that. And then, you know, there's nowhere to go. And then he gives him something at the end. I don't know if you can see it. it just gives him a little bit of attitude at the end. <laughs> uh, it was, he was putting the, you know, when he does this thing, Alec, I think that's yeah. him putting the straps on him, bro. I think that's putting the strap. <laughs> I like it. All right. So now we're getting to the important part. That's Chase yeah. again. You guys will remember special. this play. Yep. Uh, comes in motion, and he's freestyling here, bro. Yep. Jeez. Just pummels him. It's great. Is there any, uh, before I get into it, is there anything you want to say about this play? I mean, this is like quintessential, right? Because this is freestyling. This is him just knowing the play, knowing what to do, and making it just an impossible play uh, for that poor wide receiver he had nothing he could do there i think because like if you watch the way he closes on him i don't know like we were talking about on our show if he could really pass that ball like if he did it was probably gonna get deflected like i mean peters was coming in hot there was zero hesitation he just he came with the exact amount of speed such that the play would be disrupted but he wouldn't like blow past him or like lose leverage and that was just it was one of the best plays i've seen in a while for a ravens defender just top to bottom yeah just instinctual i want you to watch tyler boyd who's the guy 83 who's going to get the ball that peters is going to uh tackle you can tell as soon as marcus realized that this ball might go to tyler boyd that it's the philly special you can see marcus just take the direct path to tyler boyd yep i mean there it is and like you said he kind of like stutter steps gives a hesitation we'll watch him come out stutter step little hesitation just to make sure he stays with Tyler Boyd, doesn't overrun it. Uh, we'll get a better chance here when we see it in slow motion. Um, but just the way he attacks this play from going to, you know, making sure he knows what he's seeing. I'm going to make sure I know what I'm seeing. Oh, crap. Here's the double reverse. I'm going to stutter. Mm-hmm. You know, if Tyler Boyd, to your point, if he wanted to stop and throw, Marcus Peters is going to jump and swat at that pass. And, dude, that's going to be hard enough for a quarterback, a play to, for a quarterback to make, none, nonetheless, a, uh, a wide receiver throwing it. Yep. Yeah, that was just perfectly played. And we have one more uh, play. Now, this was the the fourth down play. Um, Calais does a great job on this. Uh, 
Calais is over number 65. Number 65 has his head turned towards you. Calais is going to make this play, but something that I noticed on the replay is even if Calais doesn't make the play, this ball is going to go to Mike number 17, who is Marcus Peters is covering Alec. And you'll be able to see that even if this pass is cre completed, even if Calais doesn't do an outstanding job, Marcus Peters is going to have a chance to stop this and tackle them at the goal line just by sorting through the trash and staying disciplined. So you see the communication there. I mean, it's an excellent play by Calais, but I wanted to add this one again. Marcus has something to do with this, uh, just staying with the play. There's no way that guy's going to get into the end zone. Yeah, that's that's really great. I, you know, I didn't even notice this when I rewatched it because I was so focused on Calais. I knew that he was the one who made the play. But it's great, you know, you see him even contributing as the the backup, so to speak. Yeah. So wanted to add that in. Just you know, not every play, of course, is going to be a superstar highlight, but just tremendous effort by Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. So, Alec, it is time to talk Giants. And when we talk Giants, we have to bring in a giant of a man himself. Look, look I got him smiling already. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fellas? <laughs> it is Gabe it. Ferguson, also a master chef. Chuck, if you are still in here, you have got to see the pictures of the barbecue that Mr. Ferguson makes. Uh, not only is he a scientist, he can also cook, Gabe. Is that correct, sir? That is that is correct. I love to put some some food on the grill, some food on the smoker, um, let it get nice and delicious. I, I I love to to you know work with some fire, so to so to speak. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Gabe likes to talk dirty when he gets on the show. Like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> fire that bad boy up. Oh goodness, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Gabe. Gabe definitely definitely has the cooking skills. So Gabe. Brought you on to, to talk about three keys to the game for the Giants. But before we get in that, I got a little bit of an injury report. Thank you for coming a little early. Usually my guests come a little late, Gabe. So <laughs> we'll get you in for the uh, the pre-preview, if you will. Awesome. Um, now, here we go. Uh, graphics presented by yours truly. Um, really, guys, three injuries I would like you guys to talk about. Um, Calais is just resting. Um, we know Justice Hill is going to be out for a while with a hamstring. Marcus is just resting. Ronnie's just resting. So that leaves three guys. It's um, Rashad Bateman with his foot, Ben Cleveland with his foot, Justin Houston with his groin. I'm not optimistic about any of those guys for this week. I'll, I'll, I think we have to see them practicing um, at least on a limited basis the next two days. Gabe, looking doubtful for those guys, in my opinion. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that was my first thought as well. Whenever I see those DNPs, it's it's always a bad sign. Even even only at Wednesday, um, especially considering they were all out the previous week, um, it's, it's not a good indicator that they're going to be ready to play this week. But um, you know, that being said, it's it's, it's still a pretty light pra um, injury report compared to what we're seeing on the Giants side of things. So that that's a positive there. Yeah, for sure. These feet, man, the feet, the groin, these are going to be the problems we've been having, dude. It's 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 painful. But uh, I do think that uh, the good news is with with Houston being out, um, you know, JPP has been playing better. Harp said in the presser today he wouldn't rule out OA or um, not OA, uh, Bowser just yet. So maybe there's a little bit of help coming there. But at least, you know, JPP has been growing his role, so that feels better. And then I guess with Bateman, like obviously I would like him back, but when I think about the Giants and their strengths, I think we'll be okay without him. And I would love to see him back sooner than later, though, because this is painful to see. The guy like never looked like he was truly injured, but then now has missed a game and maybe two. So that's always the worst. Yeah, see, and now like, like Bateman to me is, a, is a still a big loss because – and it feels like they're still having to scheme Duvernay open to some extent to like the running back stuff and, and all the other stuff to get him the ball in space. If Bateman can actually get himself open against good corners. Um, so like, I, I can't minimize that loss. And of course we're, we're really thin at edge too. So I can't minimize the Houston loss, but Gabe, um, you know, I agree with Alec on this JPP. Like if I gave him a rusty grade, I thought he was really rusty the first week. And looked like he knocked some of that off, got a sack, a couple of batted down passes. Uh, he was almost the guy we did film study on tonight, Gabe. 
Oh yeah, I love I love that game from JPP this past week. He's um he's been really exciting um to come in and like you said, there was some rust obviously in the first week, but have him come in in the second appearance. He's playing a lot of snaps already, um, and just ready to go in and contribute right away. That's something you love to see. And and the Ravens really desperately needed it. With with Houston going out, like if they didn't have JPP at this point, I mean, where would where would that pass rush be? I mean, it's already kind of a little bit lacking. And if they didn't have, you know, somebody in there who's at least a veteran who can get after the quarterback, that's a tough situation to be in. So hopefully, you know, getting some guys back. You know, you talked about Bowser. Obviously, the news broke that Ajabo was practicing today. So I think, you know, we are grounding into shape there. It's going to be a really fun second half of the season, I think, once all these guys are back healthy. But right now, you're just trying to make it work with, with some with some glue and some duct tape. So hopefully, you know, this is another game. You can get another good one out, JPP. So, um, Gabe, I'm going to come right back to you because we don't get a chance to talk like, we, like, I, like I want to and like you want to. Uh, Gabe, by the way, follow his pod. Can you just tell us the situation room? Give us the stuff real quick before I get to my question. Yeah, of course. Um, um, I'm over on uh, filmstudybaltimore.com with Ken McCusick. Um, he hosts our podcast as well as his own. Um, we're the situation room. I rec- hosted with uh, Jordan Co. Um, and, you know, we just we will put up a podcast every week after the game. Talk a little bit about, you know, our quick takeaways, uh, some of the plays and and you know play calling that intrigued us and just a kind of a, a different way of approaching it and, and just some of the, like the schematic things that we're seeing that we're really liking or sometimes not liking so um hopefully you guys will you know take a listen and, and enjoy what you're what you're hearing yeah look for gabe and jordan co you see at gabe fergie right there you can find them on twitter situation room is the name of the pod so look them up man they really do a, a great job recapping so my question to you fellas is when i'm looking at this team you guys just talked about the edge. Okay. So Ojabo is surprisingly, almost shockingly up practicing already. Bowser, we kind of expected to be back at this time. Um, you got Houston who will come back. You have Away. Um, you have JPP. Uh, I'm forgetting somebody. Copeland's in there. Anyway, we have bodies there. Like the two needs for this team that I see, I'd be interested to hear any comments uh, from, from, from the guys and girls in the comment section, the viewers. I'm looking at inside linebacker and I'm looking at wide receiver. To me, those are the two spots that I feel like we could really use. We could probably get a, an upgrade uh, in at, at linebacker because man, binds to me, doesn't look the same. He looks a little, looks a little beat up. He's getting blocked a little bit easier. It's just like, I can see father time taking its, it's toll on him. We could really use a steadying force next to Patrick queen there. And then receiver, like, yeah, I like Duvernay. We haven't seen a lot out of the other guys. We haven't seen likely splash onto the scene like we had hoped. Um, you know, I really feel like linebacker, wide receiver, those would be the two positions I would be looking at to acquire at the deadline if we can make a move. Well, let me start with linebacker because I, I think it's a position that has been probably the, the, the weak spot on this roster for a couple of years now. You know, ever, ever since um, LJ Fort kind of got hurt with that, that ACL um, he was he was a really underappreciated, underrated player on this on this team for a couple of years, and he's his absence hasn't really been filled since then. Um, obviously, bringing back Bynes, um, he's been solid. I think um, not great. <laughs> I think, like you said, he's probably lost a step. So you know, they brought in Klein. We'll see if he he makes the you know the the game in this coming week. So I think they do recognize that as a spot that could use some help. Um, but I think it's also a spot that I, it's just not a spot that is very easy to play in the NFL. And if you're not getting like a star player or, or maybe someone like a Josh Ross can come back off the IR, I think you can, you can actually get him in there and maybe make it, make an impact. Um, a wide receiver. I, I agree. You know, the depth there is what's the problem. I think um, you, you lose Bateman and then you lose, like you said, that guy who can win in one-on-ones on the outside. And that's a problem for this team because you, you don't have anybody who's really that guy behind him. Um, it's hard to find that. I think, you know, in the trade market, you're, you're looking at like your true like X type receiver. That's not somebody that's easy to find. If, if you do acquire someone like that, it's going to be quite expensive. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about DJ Moore, but I think, you know, that it's going to cost a lot to get a guy like DJ Moore. So I'm not sure if, if that's really worth it um, because I, I do think, you know, once Bateman gets back, you, you like what you have there, you know, between him and, and Duvernay, that's a solid one-two combo. Obviously, Mark Andrews is your your real number one in this offense. So I feel like you're pretty good, but you do want more depth. That That's where they're lacking. And I'm not sure who that player is, but 
um, you could see that painfully obvious in this past game. You know, the, the Bengals were easily taking away some of those receivers downfield. There just weren't guys getting open. Um, and, and that that can't keep up if the Ravens want to be near the offense that they're expecting to be at, as the season unfolds. So, Alec, I got accused of being a Lamar Jackson apologist by saying that wide receivers weren't open, bro. I mean, all all the people saw was the two two throws, three throws that he missed where guys were open. But I, I didn't see a lot of separation. Like I said, Duvernay, it seems like we still got to manufacture him touches. James Shea isn't a separator. Tylen Wallace isn't a separator. Um, do you agree with Gabe and I? Because it sounds like we're on the same page. Uh, you know, inside linebacker, receiver, uh, Gabe's, Gabe's speaking the truth. Like, the thing is with DJ Moore specifically – is that he doesn't only solve a problem for this year. He's a young receiver that could – we don't have to draft another one. We'll, we'll have one ready to go with Lamar, ready to make a championship run this year and for years beyond if things break our way. This is true. Put up Yuri's comment. I think that's hilarious. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> no, not that one. I've seen that too much. <laughs> the Baltimore, that's funny. Off yeah. to DJ Moore. Yes, yes. And also, before you start, what's up, Fish Trainer? best fish trainer alive if you've ever met uh, a fish trainer um i haven't but apparently we know one here and he says we are going to miss wink this week so already started on the giant stuff man fish trainer misses wink but yeah finish us up there uh alec on the on the on the needs of this team as i see is yeah inside linebacker and receiver i think Gabe brings up a really good point about inside linebacker ross is a guy that is going to come back from ir and could potentially make an impact I also want to look at the guys that we already have. You know, we've seen a little bit of growth out of Queen, and we've seen a little bit of growth out of Harrison. If they can actually have a miraculous third year and really start to grow, stack week after week, we could be in a position four weeks from now, like the next quarter at the midway point, saying, okay, look at that. We're, we're actually significantly better at a middle linebacker. While that would be cheaper to find, it's hard to find, like Gabe said. I don't know who would necessarily be available. And then you look at wide receiver. Uh, yeah, like I think I think the way that Ravens are going to acquire wide receivers is either through trade or through the draft. And I heard them talk about on the athletic football show, and it, it's so true. Very seldomly do elite wide receivers make the free agent market. They're either signed or they're traded. And I don't think it's it's reasonable to expect the Ravens to go out of free agency and get somebody particularly worthwhile. So it, this is the path. They either going to have to use a pick on a lottery ticket or take the known commodity. So on that, in that perspective, if you told me it's a second for DJ Moore, I do it in a heartbeat. Me too. See, that's the thing. DJ Moore is under contract too. So yeah. you don't have to sign him. He's under contract. Like if you ask me, would you rather have the 26th pick next year? Let's say the season doesn't end in a Super Bowl victory. Uh, or, you know, would you, you know, re trade that pick for four years of DJ Moore? Bro, I'd give up a, I'd give up first for him. Maybe I'm in the minority of that. But I know what I get from DJ Moore, and he's in his prime. And he's a yak guy. Like, I feel like he would complement this group really, really well. So um, so let's get into the Giants injuries. As you can tell, a laundry list, bro. A laundry list. Saquon Barkley, uh, public enemy number one, as Coach Harbaugh called him. A guy we're going to have to stop. We'll see by the stats, man. It's the Saquon Barkley show in New York. He came out of the game Sunday, came back in, limited with a shoulder. We expect him to play. Um, Cordell Flott, uh, a rookie cornerback, has, I don't believe he played last game. He's looking real questionable. Kenny Galladay, is he getting a day off or is he hurt? Questionable. Darnay Holmes, who we saw getting pumped up on the uh, sideline. And if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> funny uh darnay holmes with his squad limited uh odori jackson limited former raven tony jefferson foot did not practice um uh, you know i kind of don't want to face tony jefferson this week just because you know what tony how he tends to turn it on for some games he can just be an unstoppable force like we saw him against cincinnati last year i don't want no parts of wink with tony being the henchman uh out there um their fullback was limited their first round pick was limited uh, Jason, but look, look at the list all the way. Even Tyrod with a concussion is limited. Uh, Kadarius Tony didn't practice and their main man in the middle, Leonard Williams knee limited. So fellas, it looks like we're coming up against a team who is just as banged up as we are, Gabe. Yeah, it's, um, it's a team that has overperformed. Let's put it that way. 
Um, they, they've kind of gotten by by playing a week-ish schedule. Um, you know, they've played two of the worst teams in the league and not even beat them soundly. They kind of just got by. So I think they're they're a little bit of a, a fake 4 and one They might be the worst 4 and one team in the league. I mean, they're definitely the worst 4 and one <laughs> team in the league. The worst 4 and one team we've seen in a while. Um, but they do have some talent. I'm not going to completely take that away from them. But, you know, with this many guys on, on the injury list, that's those are some starters you're talking about, some major players for them. I mean, Saquon Barkley is their offense, essentially, you know, um, he's, he's the guy that, I mean, you called public enemy number one and Harbaugh said, like, he is a stud, like he is top, he was top four draft pick, right? I think three or four yeah, overall. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he had all the hype and when he's been healthy, he's been an incredible playmaker. So if he's not going to be a hundred percent, that is a big thing in this game. Um, we also saw a couple wide receivers that have barely played or not played at all. Wandell Robinson, Darius Tony. Um, the, the Giants lost Sterling Shepard already to the IR. So, like, they are down to, like, the bottom of their barrel. I mean, we saw a nice game last week from Darius Slayton, but they don't really have much depth there. I mean, it's guys you've never heard of who are playing wide receiver for them. And then quarterbacks. And, uh, our, friend, quarterbacks. The NFL, our friend, the NFL chick, was the one who asked the question to Harbaugh about um, Rita, uh, uh, about the, uh, the Giants turf. We've already played on that darn thing once this year. Uh, it's a shame that the Giants and the Jets, the New York teams, uh, they have plenty of money, I'm guessing. You could probably sell each for about a billion. And they're sitting up there playing in New Jersey, I believe, still on some, you know, messed up turf with like a, you know, a, literally like a half billion dollar of salary going out to their players between them. Um, they lost Sterling Shepard. They got a whole bunch of banged up players like Alec. Like, I don't even know if, if Bateman – like, I don't want Bateman to get set back in a game like this. I think we could win knock on wood without him. Uh, Justin Houston, like, this is a game I worry about. Lamar getting banged up. Alec, I'm, I don't want to go up and play these guys against Wink on this turf, bro. Am I being it, too much? It cr- of- no, no. It, cro- it crossed my mind, like, bring out Tyler Huntley. Like, bring out <laughs> – like, like I, I'm not even kidding. Like, if you get up by, like, two or three touchdowns and it's the third quarter – I'll, I'll say tease the comeback and we'll bring back our guys if we have to. Like, I just don't want to deal with it, dude. Like, I, I totally feel you with that. It's really frustrating that they have so much money and and, and yet the, the worst uh, turf in the league. It, it should not become a question that everyone's asking. Like, it's totally unacceptable. The NFL should be better than this. But, you know, we look at their, their report. Uh, apparently, uh, Tony Jefferson caught the same foot injury uh, bug that we have. While he was here, uh, you look at their their top three wide receivers are all out. Wondell Robinson's never played a snap for him, as far as I know. Uh, Tony hasn't played the, yet, I don't think, this year. And Galladay uh, has been a ghost of himself ever since signing. So it that's that's painful. And then you look at their defense. They have uh, Azizo Jolari, the calf, limited practice. Leonard Williams, like you said, limited practice. Uh, Adoree Jackson, limited practice. Like That's the heart and soul of their defense right there. Also, all the injury reports. So, this team is definitely uh, battered and bruised, and I feel like it, there's there should be a very clear path to victory if these guys aren't up to full uh, playing speed. My guy, our guy, Shrimp Trawler in the house, man. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. That zone versus Burrow won't work against Barkley. I have the smartest uh, commenters, viewers out there, fellas. Like they they come to home huddle it up films. Uh, Shrimp trawler is one of them. He's absolutely right, Gabe. And the thing is, luckily the Giants don't have the quarterback or the weapons to force us to play this zone. Um, we just showed the the, uh, the Marcus Peters film session. Marlin's playing out of his mind. Alec and you just went through the receivers that they don't have. Like we're just gonna leave Marcus on an island, man to man. Marlin on an island, man to man. Have Hamilton or Stone back there, just single safety. Load that box and try to stop Saquon, I would imagine, Gabe. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, they played almost entirely zone last week. Um, and I think this this game, you're going to see a lot more man. I, I don't think you're going to be just in man because I think you'll see some cover three. You're not going to see those two high shells, though. So you'll see, you know, seven, eight guys down the box. And one of the things that the, the Giants like to do is do some wildcat with Saquon. But he's not a threat to throw the ball. He's just running the ball. They're just changing the numbers game. So... You you want to ID that you want to have you know eight guys in the box when he, when he's up there um, under center and you want to be able to to have you know an extra defender who's able to 
account for that. So those are the things that I think, you know, we've seen on film that the Ravens can prepare for and that they, they're going to have a different game plan for it because they don't have the weapons on the outside that the Bengals have. They don't have the quarterback that the Bengals have. The one thing they have is, is that, that running back and you just have to keep him contained. And if you can do that, their, their offense is completely shut down. Yeah. And fish trainer, one more comment, Alec, I'll get you to um, address this real quick before we move on. Good offensive coordinators should always be manufacturing touches on every down. That's what Andy Reid does for Pat Shanahan does for Jimmy. Shoot, there's a lot of coordinators like that. McVay does it too. Um, uh, uh, the guy in Cleveland, uh, Kubiak schemes, all those dudes. Yeah, they manufacture touches, Alec. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm in agreement. I think it's kind of ridiculous how often we ask Lamar to be a superhero and make a play every time, like. You see some of these manufactured touches where it's a very obvious, like you're going to this guy, uh, it, it, the whole play is built for them to get the ball in their hands and, and make something out of it. And we ask Lamar to do that all the time with some of the, the plays where we give it directly to him and say, go do something special. He has playmakers that can do the same thing. I don't know why we always, I feel like we don't do enough scheming. I totally agree with you. And just like to make him get into a rhythm. I think one of the people, I forget who was, who said it or what made me think of it, but Lamar's a pretty good rhythm thrower, you know, like you can see him back up. Um, I think it was actually your comment about the wide receivers not getting open. You see him back up, you know, and the ball's getting out on time on schedule to his reads if they're doing their job. So he's not going to just hold on to the ball for no good reason. If he's holding on to it, it's because everyone's covered, you know, <laughs> like that's that's the only reason he's very good about going through his progressions, find the open guys. And if no one's open, then it gets interesting. All right, Gabe, give it to us, bro. What's your first key to the game? Is I, I have all my – what do you think about this chart, Gabe, manufactured? Uh, would you like to meet the guy who made this chart? <laughs> he looks like he's very talented and oh. is very good at graphics. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, when I was looking at the at, at the matchup, you know, I, I think the um, – the Ravens clearly have some advantages. Um, and, and one of them is, is on offense um, in their rushing offense versus a Giants run defense that has not been very good. Um, but before we get into that, I kind of want to just say discipline, I think, in this game is going to be very important. And, and not just discipline in terms of like knowing your assignments, but discipline in terms of like sticking to the game plan and sticking to what is available for you. So on defense, you know, that means, you know, obviously like assignments contain good tackling, um, and like I mentioned before, watching the Wildcat, I think, you know, just stick within the game plan. Don't try and play hero ball. Um, you know, if you play hero ball and miss your tackle, then Saquon might be gone for 80 yards. Like that's the worst possible thing to do in this game. You know, I was watching Marcus Williams, um, in his run of it, and he does something that's really interesting. I know he's not playing obviously, but I don't, I don't know if it's something that he does personally, or if it's something that he's been taught to do, you know, as that kind of last line of defense, but he takes very conservative angles and how he and how he plays in his run defense and he kind of like gives ground in order to make sure he makes a tackle so he makes sure to not let up the big play he might let up a few extra yards but he's there to make sure that guy does not get past him and i think that's the kind of approach you have to take in this game on defense and then on offense discipline in the same way stay true to the game plan don't try to do too much last week we saw um on with i was watching the giants play with with the packers and they were marching the ball up and down the field when they when they ran the ball when they had like these attacking the short flats attacking um attacking the intermediate short intermediate areas um when, when rogers kind of got pressured or if he just wanted to take a big shot down the field that's when they got in trouble they got behind when they started doing that and that, that's something that i think you have to have a game plan for in order to address kind of the scheme that wink's going to bring with his with his blitz heavy approach you have the these quick hot reads, the ones that will get you five, six yards. And that's what you need to do to stay on target, keeping the chains moving and put together some long drives. That's how you're going to beat them on offense. You don't need to make explosive plays in this game. All right. So building off of that, uh, uh, staying on schedule, staying disciplined on both sides of the ball. This is where middle linebacker worries me with specifically Mr. Queen, who tries to do too much. Like it, it's a great point. Um, stay on schedule, make the tackle. Um, take quote unquote, take the bullet from Saquon. If you have to just look, he's a big, strong guy. He's going to get an extra yard or two, but you can't let him shake you and get downfield and put the pressure on somebody else coming across flying in the picture. So yes, um, Geno Stone, very good at that. Kyle Hamilton can close ground and break down very, very easily too. 
um, very sure tackler, even in the NFL so far. And then I think that also having Lamar Jackson as the quarterback practicing against somebody who turns it into 11 on 11 football. Um, you know, if Saquon gets in the, uh, in the, in the Wildcat, all right, you just imagine Lamar's back there because it's it's the same thing. you got to respect Lamar like you would Saquon Barkley. Uh, they're both that dynamic of a runner. So, yes, yeah, staying in those lanes and being disciplined is, is very important defensively. And then on offense, Alec, I'm going to kick it to you on this, bro. We, you know, the blueprint was out to stop Lamar, if you remember. You know, he can't handle the blitz. He, he can't handle these zero blitz looks, um, whether it, it ends up being blitz zero or the, you know, drop everybody into coverage. And you look, and every week when I look at the numbers, Lamar continues to be number one. Not number two, not number three, number one in the NFL versus the Blitz. So, like Gabe said, take your yards when it's there, but really proud of Lamar and Roman, the offense together, the wide receivers, the offensive line, everybody that put all this effort into solving the Blitz. We're going to need that to come up big time this week, this week against Wink. Yeah, because it's, it's still Wink back there. I saw him do plenty of, uh, you know, cover zero blitzes. I saw plenty of that uh, when he was playing against uh, Rogers. So he didn't respect that quarterback. Maybe he won't respect Lamar. And if he does that, he just is giving us the W because I have full expectation that we will continue our success against the blitz. So we'll see what game plan he comes out with. Maybe he'll surprise us, show some growth. But Lamar Jackson, even without, you know, one of his top receivers in Bateman is still able to defeat the blitz. And that's just because he's taken it to the next level as a uh, processor of defenses. He knows where the vulnerabilities are and he is willing to die another day, which is exactly how the giants are trying to win the game. But we have more talent. The one thing I'll say and talk about the defense, laying up a couple more yards is if they allow these long drives, I believe in our defense every time that they go out there, have an opportunity to make a pick force a fumble, or make a turnover of splash play. They have that in them. So by making these long drives, I think it actually plays the defense's favor as an opportunistic defense, gives them more opportunities to be opportunistic, right? So I think that's a surprisingly like useful trait of them. They're, they're going to be the bend, don't break defense this year. And that's fine. <laughs> you know, that's, that's totally fine. So yeah, that's kind of what I see. I think, both of these teams are willing to be patient, but the Ravens have a lot more playmakers, so their patience will be the one that gets rewarded the most. So you mentioned discipline, Gabe. What else do you have for us as a key for the game? Yeah, I mean, it's it's getting getting your playmakers involved, um, getting you know manufacturing touches for Duvernay. It's manufacturing touches for Mark Andrews. It's it's making sure, maybe getting Likely involved a little bit more. You know, we've seen him have a few opportunities but i think i think he's someone who can kind of win over the middle of the field and they haven't really been using him that much in, in that way they've kind of been using him out in the flats and, and that's okay too if, if he can pick up you know five or six yards for you i think he, he can be attacking the seams you know use him up the middle yeah a comment there from shrimp trial about prochet i think prochet is another guy who could have a, a good game in this one um he's you know he, he was a little bit more involved this last week. We saw even Tylen Wallace get open deep a couple of times. So I think, you know, there's some guys um, and, and like it, it is a little bit on, on Greg Roman to scheme them up from your, your offensive, you know, game plan of figuring out a way to attack, you know, what the defense is going to do. But, you know, I think, you know, what Wink Martindale is going to do. You, you have an idea and unless he completely goes off script and does something completely different, then you might have to make some adjustments, but you know what he, what he is at his core. And he's always been that way. He's been that way all of this year. He's been that way since he was a Ravens coordinator. Use that against him. You know him better than anybody else. So you can attack where, he, where he's going to be allowing you to attack. And that's what you want to do on offense. Alec, you agree with Troy right here. I had to go back in time for this comment, but yeah. Gabe speaking to it. And I've seen it too, man. You know, I'm not G Rose's biggest fan. I'm not, uh, you know, going to tweet every day to get him out of town and how bad he stinks or anything. But we've seen the vault slowly creep open, um, especially down by the goal line. And with, again, with Duvernay getting touches. Alec, to me, it seems like, I don't know, I just want to say three times a game, four times a game. I'm like, all right, Greg Roman, that was a nice play when nothing else was working. You found a way to keep these chains moving. Yeah, the vault's definitely been opening. Another play, you know, we talk about the shovel passes. We also can talk about the uh, 
somebody that's not a quarterback under center plays. They've done that a couple times where they'll have, uh, you know, usually it's Andrews kind of like show up right under the center. I think the one time they had uh, uh, Ricard right there and he took the the sneak. But that's all like really, I don't know, creative plays. We see it out of the best offensive coordinators, these big plays at the right moments to get, get the first down, get the touchdown. And it seems like the Ravens are finally doing that. Where last year we went into these high leverage plays and we call these plays that may have scratch our heads. Now it seems as though they're doing what I was saying. I think, like, I think it was one of my, uh, I don't know, I forget what series it was with Ken, but like, I was like, I want them to have like five plays and they just put up like a hand that they practice that week and they just do it. And it seems like they're doing that now. And they're all like, you know, tricky. You know, they're all like a little weird. They're not just like conventional plays. It's going to be the first time you see this lineup all game and then you have to respond to it. So that's a, I think that's a big positive. There you go, Gabe. Do you have a third key before we dig into these stats? Is your yeah, right now? Yeah, the third one I had was just just win the physicality game. You know, I think we've said it before. The Ravens are a more talented team. They they have more talent in the trenches. They have more talent at, re- at skill positions. They have more talent at quarterback. The only position you might say that the Giants are more talented at is running back. I, I mean, I, I kind of looked at all these positions and I was like, Ravens are just better. Like, use that skill. Use that physicality your ability to wear down the opponent whether that's in the run game on offense whether that's on defense and you know winning in in your in your uh, pass rush or winning against the blocks that they're trying to do but the giants don't have a great offensive line like their right tackle you know evan neal who they who they drafted in the first round he's been horrible like you know you should I'm beat shocked. him up he's shocked, been bro. bad now now the other guy the other the other side um thomas he's he's very good so he's been playing really well he's been playing really well for two years now but you can you can win up front and i think that's what the ravens just need to do they're bigger they're better they're stronger just just win win in the trenches and that's going to just set you up for the whole game yeah they're going to need some discipline though because the even though um jones has been dealing with some sort of injury the whole time he's been able to be an effective runner for them kind of uh maybe a very light version <laughs> the lightest uh, of dressing, so to speak, of uh, of Josh Allen, like being able to evade, get yards on the ground, and, and and kind of provide that extra element for his offense. But you got like I think, and that's the thing that gives me some confidence, though, with the way the Ravens defense has been playing, is that they have been, at least the last, I think, week or two, more conservative about making sure they actually make the tackle. And like we saw said earlier, they may give up an extra yard here or there, but they're going to make sure they get the tackle and not give up the big play. And that's that's honestly, I think, the way to win in the in today's NFL. There you go. I love Gabe's points, though. You know, I think that a lot of them go hand in hand. Um, you know, Yuri just mentioned Dayball has my expect, respect. Um, Shroom Trawler said, weren't the Packers better? Yeah, they were, bro. Um, like Dayball, like those two, those two comments go hand in hand. Their offensive coordinator, you know, head coach and defensive coordinator, Wink, have really pulled them out some close games. So be the more disciplined team, like Gabe said, was his first point. Uh, manufacture some, t- some touches. That goes back to the coordinators. And be more physical. It's like all the basics. Like I like what Gabe came with tonight. It's like the back to the ba- basics, back to your roots. Just don't mess this up. Don't get out coached. Uh, make your tackles. Don't make mental mistakes. And, and and just rely on Lamar to win this game uh, and the defense to win this game. Rely on your guys to do that. Put them in good positions to be physical and do their job. So I love it. So let's get to the stats, fellas. Um, first, at the top, Ravens, still fourth in the NFL. Now, 27.6. I've, I've looked at the defensives we played. All right, the Jets have come on. They've been a pretty good defense. Week two, Miami, you know what kind of problems they give people with their scheme. Week three, the Patriots, we saw them almost shut out the Lions who were first in the uh, NFL in points. Everybody knows what the Bills has got. And Cincinnati, we saw last week, was a hell of a high defense. That's five defenses, pretty good to good, great, as good as it gets. Uh, we're still fourth in the NFL in points. The Giants, Wink Martindale's Giants, ninth in the NFL, only allowing 18.6 points a game. Alec and uh, Gabe, start with you, Alec. You want to try to exceed that 27 this week, don't you? Like, can we, we should shoot for that, right? 
I mean, of course, I want to see him score 50, but honestly, I don't think it's going to happen. I think uh, I think 27 is the high range of expectation just because I don't expect the Ravens to be quick firing in this game. I, I, I certainly see a scenario where it happens, but I think they're going to be methodical. I think their, li- their drives are going to be quite long. So uh, I wouldn't actually count on it being too much of a shootout. And also, I don't I don't foresee the Giants applying enough pressure to make us play any faster. So I, I would not be surprised. I think I said my score prediction. Uh, I thought 24 points in this game. Yeah, you know what game I said out got for that, but I have a I have a, a suggest or, or a, a, another prediction that this game is going to be over by four o'clock uh, Eastern time. Like both teams are going to run the ball, rely <laughs> on the run. Like I could see this clock. Oh, the first quarter's done all right. Oh, sure, it's halftime. You know, like I could see that. Like twenty, if we scored twenty-seven. I think that that would be a good mark considering how conservative and churn, chain churning this game could be. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot is going to depend on the kind of game plan approach that the Giants have in terms of, especially Wink Martindale. Is, is he going to allow the Ravens to run on them, or is he going to try and say, "I'm going to pack the the box. I'm going to." Beat, make Lamar beat me with his arm. And, and if he takes that kind of approach, I think it could go one of two ways. It could be a very low scoring game if, you know, if if their pressure kind of is, is, is a lot and the Ravens don't have a good counter for that, or it could be a very high scoring game because it, we've seen in the past when, when teams have kind of brought in those defenders into the box, Lamar's beaten them over the top. Um, now they, they don't have Bateman in this game. So that's going to be a little bit, um, you know, even a little bit at a disadvantage Okay, we don't know if Bateman will play or not. I'm I'm anticipating him not playing. So without Bateman, you know, you don't have that that weapon at wide receiver. But I think you can still um, put up points with the, with the players they do have. So it, it is going to be a little bit about how this game is played and kind of the approach they take into it. But I still think that the Ravens will put over 20 points. I think 24 to 27 is probably the right amount for this one. Sergeant, good to see you, sir. I was almost going to put the oh. picture of you in uniform up there. Yeah, you're up there. You're in there. Oh, my bad. Uh, I was hey. stats, my bad, my bad. That's all right. Uh, you were looking good. Luckily, you weren't picking your nose or anything. Oh, um, yeah. we're, we're feeling a, a slower paced or a fast pace. The clock keeps going. Teams running the ball, a grind it out kind of game. Not necessarily a shootout up there. Are you, are you feeling like a lower scoring game between these two teams than they're, than they're used to? Or could you see a shootout? Like, uh, what do you think about our offense? How, how's our offense going to do against these guys? I think um, our offense. I think it's going to be a, a mixture. What I believe is, uh, I think this could be a good game for Mark Andrews, and hopefully we can get a likely involved. I think it, maybe do do. Hopefully we can connect on a couple of deep balls, man. I, I think we can push the ball in certain areas of the field, just because of the whole Lamar factor, and I think we can take advantage of, of that. But the main thing of how I look at it, man, uh, I was shooting my shot. I'm, I've been, you know, pretty accurate with shooting a couple shots here and there. I think, uh, you know, they play a lot of short ball in New York, man. They try to do the whole screen game. <laughs> they try to do a whole lot of, you know, short ball screen game in New York. They don't really try to push the ball down the field, it's, especially with all the injuries that they have at receivers. So uh, I think, you know, Pepe Will is going to put us in great position with the interception going, you know, when we play them. And I think, the offense is just going to, you know, feed off the thing and just be able to p- push the ball, man. Uh, <laughs> it was a revelation. That's pretty funny. But it's going to put us in a good position where we can just dominate. But I think this is where I think a, a game, this could be a good game for likely, in my in my opinion. Or whoever the second tight end is, whoever is going to be, man, to be honest. It could be all over for all we know. But I think there's are going to be great opportunities for a deep ball and then just for the second tight end to eat off. All right, Alec, I'm going to get you in on this, man, from Brandon. Thank you, Brandon, for typing in. Robinson and Dev deep, baby. Send likely on straight up routes. Wink is going to give us the deep ball. Comment on that comment, Alec, because that's kind of what uh, Garnett's saying a little bit down there. I'm feeling like some similarities here, like we're getting on some kind of same same page. I'll take it. I mean, that would be beautiful. Uh, I would love to see Lamar gain that confidence, hit hit one of these deeper balls that he kind of missed last week and get one of those big plays. That'd be great. I also like the opportunity of what it gives other otherwise, right? You can have likely underneath. He's a, a good technician there. Maybe crochet underneath, maybe uh, drop it off to JK Dobbins. And then he can do what Saquon did against the Packers get, you know, 40 yards on a chunk play. I, I totally can see that outcome. So yeah, go ahead. I mean, that sounds, that sounds like a good strategy. And I think the Ravens would be uh, making a mistake not to give it a chance. 
So staying on this pass offense of the Ravens game, um, I'm going to bring up Fish Trainer one time here. Dude, he's saying use do more like Samuel. Give him his 15, maybe 13, 14 touches. It might be an exaggeration, but not five or six like we're used to seeing do. If he, he wants to see that number get up into the double digits. Let's look at the Ravens pass offense. Um, 21st in yards a game, middle of the pack in yards per attempt, still third in touchdowns. So the Ravens will score throwing the ball. Um, a kind of a middling pass uh, offense, but again, we've mentioned the defenses that we've went against have been no joke either. The Giants pass defense. The thing that surprises me is there are 11 sacks. I would expect Wink's team to be a little higher than that. Um, but again, the Giants have good numbers versus the pass. So we're going to have to find some way to manufacture some uh, some pass yards just to finish up here, Gabe, on the Ravens pass offense. You can see it's going to be a tough matchup for us at New York. Yeah, I mean, we also have to remember who they've been playing um, in terms of the Giants pass defense. You know, they played – Baker Mayfield and the really, really bad Panthers. They played um, Justin Fields and a really bad passing offense in, in, in the Bears. Um, they played uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys, who are without Dak Prescott. So a lot of like their stats, I think, in terms of the past events, have been more based on who they've played than you know who they've um, than really being like a shutdown unit. Um, it, they're missing or have a couple of their corners banged up. Like, I don't think they have playmakers necessarily in the secondary. Um, they do generate a pass rush, but it's, it's mostly generated. You know, they're blitzing. Like, every third down play I watched last week when they play the backers as a blitz, you bring at least five guys every single time. So you just have to be prepared for that and have somebody available. And if that means you're not going to be setting the ball deep, that's okay. But as long as you have, you know, outlets for Lamar, a quick read, a hot read for him to, to take those yards, you know, take it. And, and you know, I, I said it earlier, you know, take what the defense is giving you. You don't have to necessarily take that shot over the top. That's how Rodgers got in trouble last week. I don't think the Ravens are, dis the Ravens are disciplined. They won't have that issue. Um, there will be a time and place to take those shots. That's a first down play action shot. You know, you, that's when you want to take it. You don't want to take it on, on third and medium or third and long. So it's just kind of a, a, a game plan situation. You know, pick your pick your spots in the game and when you want to take those shots. But I, th I think overall, you can definitely put up more than what what some of these teams have been doing against the Giants' defense. They they are not like an elite unit by any stretch. All right, Garnett. So I want to finish up with you on this run, or, or excuse me, Ravens' pass offense. Gabe Gabe making me feel a little more optimistic here, saying that yeah, these some of these other teams couldn't take advantage of the Giants' pass defense, but this high flying Ravens' pass offense can. Like, it doesn't sound right, but I understand what he's saying, where Wink will give it to you, bro. You know what to expect. Uh, you know how much Wink drove us crazy last year and over the years. One minute, he's the best coordinator you've ever seen. You're so lucky to have him. The next time, you're cursing him out. The next week, when we're doing the game reviews, like, how are you feeling? Uh, you commented the first comment, but give me some more about this Ravens pass offense against the Giants. Yeah, so, you know, speaking of the wink, man, I seem like he's doing a lot of half winking over there, which is, uh, you know, beautiful, good thing for wink, man. Not bravo to you, you know, former guy with us, right? But for us, uh, I mean, you made a great point, uh, Gabe, about, uh, with, uh, you know, the, them not playing up to par talent, I should say. And I think this is actually a, a good opportunity for us to, uh, to get them in check to realize, you know, we're not, Chicago or those other teams that you play, you know, Baker Mayfield led Panthers or whatever. So I, I really do feel confident in uh, the abilities of, uh, I came up with a funny nickname. I call him Debo name because, you know, you know, Debo, uh, Duvernay. Okay, I'm done. That was corny. But anyway, uh, with that being said, yeah, we're not doing that again. Uh, but with, with Duvernay, uh, I think this is could be a, a, a good game where he could literally, you know, show more. I, I don't know why we stopped going to him, man. Like I said, like that would really disturbs me, but just to get back, stay on topic. I think Duvernay can, like I said, have a really good game. Maybe DeMarcus Robinson here or there, but I really do believe it's going to be between him and, uh, you know, uh, likely. I, we all know Mark Andrews is going to be Mark Andrews. He's going to get his touches to do whatever, but I just think that it'll be a great opportunity, you know, to catch Wink. We know what Wink does, and we know what we want to do, but we do have, we have new toys, and I think we're going to start utilizing them more and more, uh, like how we've seen doing it being used. It just sucks that we had to wait till you know a certain re a receiver to get injured, but hey, man, you know, we're, we're, we're the vault is still you know opening it up. I should say. There you go. So, Alec, 
one very unwink like number 25th in the league winks defense just like the ravens defense averaging five yards per carry allowed um bro you couldn't run the ball on winks ravens but you're running the ball on winks giants did the tune of 5.0 yards per carry the ravens are finally getting something out of their running backs with jk back we saw Kenyon drake bro our running average it wasn't just lamar last week for once Everybody was chipping in. The Ravens, seventh in the league in rushing offense, second in the league in yards per carry against a very vulnerable-looking Giants rush defense. Bro, can we dominate this team on the ground and put up a couple hundred? <laughs> I mean, maybe. So if you look at who they played, uh, the Titans didn't do too much, only 93 yards, but then the, the Panthers put 146 up, Cowboys 176, Bears 149. And then the Packers only uh, 94 yards. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think that would play into the Ravens game plan a bit. You know, if they can, like we said, if they can run, get the heck out of there, <laughs> you know, try to get no injuries. Uh, maybe they will. But I just don't see that. I don't, I don't see us actually tearing up too much on the run game. I don't see any big plays. I can see us getting a lot of, you know, good chunks. But I don't, I don't see any uh, big plays that really rack up those numbers. All right, Gabe, go ahead. Ravens run game. I, I think it, a little bit goes back to what what Martindale's game plan is, and and we've seen teams kind of do do different game plans against the Ravens, and we've seen some teams like the Jets and and, and the Dolphins who are more willing to have the guys in the box, and they're going to say if you're going to be heavy, we're going to come with eight nine guys in the box and force you to throw it over the top. If that's his approach, then you know I think you take those shots and 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 maybe you don't have that big rushing game, or maybe you you get you hit one of the big ones like we saw we saw Lamar hit a couple of times. You know he's if you pack the box and he gets through, then it's a touchdown. So that can definitely drive up that that um, that yardage total. Um, but if they do, you know, with the in the recent weeks, you know, we've seen the Bengals. Um, they kind of played light boxes against the Ravens when they're in you know 12, 22 percent even. We've only seen six, seven guys in the box against the the Ravens, you know, power and like counter scheme. Like the, the Ravens can pick up chunk yardage. We saw a lot of big uh, run plays over the past couple of weeks, um, both against the Bills and and against the um, and even dating dating back to the Patriots. You know, they were starting to turn out some nice chunk yardage in the running game. It, it's really just going to depend on on how many guys they have in the box. Because if you're not going to respect it and you're only going to have six or seven guys in there, I think you can definitely, you know, get some really, really big runs off of that. And, and it's just going to be dependent on how they defend it and, you know, just what the Ravens are, are willing to do. If they give them those light boxes, you should run on it all day. So, Garnett, I'm going to get to, to you before we get to some comments here. Bro, I've been waiting for for six weeks to ask you, Garnett. So I'm just so happy. So last year, when we went over the Ravens game, what did you and I, you, Jake, and I talk about every week with the Ravens defensive plan? Is it going to be a full wink? Is it going to be a no wink? Or is it going to be a half wink? And we're talking about Wink Martindale and the type of pressure he brings and what kind of game plan. So we only get to talk about it one time this year, and it's against this Ravens team. So Garnett, I asked you for old time's sake, no wink, half wink, full wink. What kind of wink we getting, brother? I think we're gonna get a half wink, man. Uh, so I, I think Wink is gonna want them to be a half wink because he wants them to be disciplined against Lamar. But what ends up happening, pass rushers get you know they get complacent, they get tired, and they say, "Hey, screw it, I'm full winking, baby." So, but I think we're gonna get a, a, a half wing, man, just to you know, be just he wants to play discipline. All right, Garnett, we love it, bro. You, you know, you're always from Street Code Stanley to the Purple Patrol. You know, you're like <laughs> you're like the phrase coiner, bro. You are the trendsetter. So we got people answering in Garnett. Wink is going full wink. Uh shrimp trawler, full wink. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Um, we also have where is he? Where is he? Shout out to the vault with a bull um, uh, breathing steam. How would you categorize that, Alec? He's smoke. Smoke yes, coming out of his nose. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you, thank you, G. Um, yeah, JK is a big, big, big addition. Turns busted plays into a two and four yard run game. That, you know, Gabe, 
without going on a big tirade, bro, this is my problem with PFF and people who try to weigh the passing game too much over the run game. Your playbook opens up if you ever played or coach football. If it's third and seven, your playbook is a lot more closed than if it's third and four. There are four-yard routes you can turn to get a first down. And what J.K. brings to that is down and distance, keeping your offense on schedule. Um, just him, like I said, even without his explosiveness, just a hell of a running back who can get you to tough yards. Yeah, I mean, how many times last year, even the first two weeks of this year, did we see, you know, just first first down runs that went for one yard, zero yards, negative one yard? J.K. is a difference maker in that. He turns, he makes one guy miss and kept, picks up three. He keeps his legs churning. He he knows a way to get skinny, pick up, you know, a couple extra yards here and there. It's it it completely keeps you on schedule on offense. It makes a huge difference. So and that, and that's honestly even this season, that's when the Ravens have gotten in trouble, is when they have gotten behind the sticks, you know, whether it's penalty related, you know, maybe you get a sack, whatever it may be. And they're they're in third and longs, that's when they've struggled. Like, but when they're in third and like reasonable, they've been very good on third down. Especially the past couple of weeks. They've been more on schedule. The running game has gotten going. They've been much better on third down the past few weeks and you know, started off a little rough, but they're on the, the right track. So, you know, having JK Dobbins is a big part of that. Um, you know, we even saw Kenyon Drake kind of break out a little bit last week. He had some nice runs as well. Um, you know, obviously Justice Hill was, was a kind of really good, you know, change of pace for them, you know, a couple of weeks until he got hurt. So, you know, I, I think that that game plan is, is there to stay. They're going to, they're going to get back to running the ball. They're going to be more effective with it. And then obviously you always have Lamar. Um, he's the trump card when it comes to running the ball. We saw that at the end of last week. You know, this is the Mar- Lamar offense. He takes over the game. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, so, you know, I don't want to see them rely on that. Like, they don't – he shouldn't be the guy every single time. But when you need it in those high lever situations, you always have that play you can turn to. What I don't want to see is them – having, you know, 10 guys in the box and, and, and making everybody win their block. Cause that's, that's when you lose, <laughs> unless you're going to run play action. I don't, I don't like those big, big jumbo formations, give them some space to work in, spread the ball out a little bit. We saw incredibly effective play and in, in the most critical point of the game last week when Lamar got him in field goal range, they were four wide. He was able to, you know, do that um, read option or it wasn't a, yeah, it was a read option. And, and he ran it up the middle, up the gut, picked up 20 yards is because there's six guys in the box. When Lamar is available to do that, he's going to pick up those chunky yardages every time. So that's what I, what, what I want to see. Keep those chains moving. If you get a big run, you know, picks up 15, 20 yards, that's even better. But, you know, having the talent in the running back room, having Lamar, that makes it so much easier. There you go. Well said. Well said. Anybody have anything to add on that? Because, dude, he took a lot. That was great by Gabe. My drop. There you go. <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. Hey, um. Marcus commented. He asked the guys in the chat, so I'm sorry for blowing you up here, Marcus, if you don't like it. But I'm going to ask, ask Alec on this because he's been quiet here for the last couple of minutes. What do you guys think about Marcus's Williams injury mean for Ardarius Washington? Do you see Ardarius getting some time in the defensive back pseudo safety? Or do you think Ardarius is still behind like Pepe and Brandon Stevens as a slot corner? Could, could we see Ardarius because Marcus is hurt? I'm going to guess no. Um, I think we saw enough out of Stevens and Pepe during preseason that if they got into an injured scenario in this game, they might just use them in those roles. I don't anticipate us calling him up just yet. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, yeah, I would like to see him, Marcus. You're very welcome, Marcus. I would like to see our Darius get a chance because man, he's just, he's just a good football player. And I think that if he got used to the speed of the game, he could help. I mean, luckily, Pepe Williams has really stepped up last game. And Marcus, I don't know if you saw the uh, the film cut up uh, I put on the channel of Pepe. He actually played deep half in some cover three and cover two. He was playing, for lack of a better word, safety uh, on a few of those snaps. So, man, they trust Pepe to kind of do what, what they expected Ardarius to do when they brought him in here, which isn't a good sign for Ardarius, but is a good, but is a good sign for Pepe's development. Um, we got Hendo. Our hand dog. He, dude, he knows how to butter up the host. Thank you, Hendo. Thank you, Hendo. Uh, I was on with Hendo again this week uh, on Justin P. But, yeah, check out. You see Ravens online on gatekeepers. Hendo does not hold back, bro. He does not hold back. We also got a uh, a half wink from Tiger Raven. And Yuri thinks half wink. And that man's 
knows what a half link looks like. Okay, uh, uh, it was D uh, that lasted ten minutes. Uh, you missed it, Garnett. He went out on another uh, another date, and he had to pump up the fact. He said, "Oh man, I got to stop. Uh, I got to stop scheduling these dates for Wednesday nights in the middle of Jason's show." Oh yeah, like like he just used our show as a way to mention the fact that he had another date tonight, Garnett. Hey man, hey, hey, hey let him do what he gotta do, man. Hey, he's be making big moves out there for a little man. I see you, buddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. All right, Alex. So kick us off. Giants offense, points per game, only 20 points per game. That's 19th. And look at the Ravens defense. All of a sudden, this terrible, awful, un un uh, redeemable Ravens defense is back to the middle of the pack, allowing 23 points a game. Alec, I'm feeling like we should hold these guys to fewer than 20 points. Give me your take, uh, Gabe and uh, Garnett. Follow them up. Just kind of a quick response on this one. Man, I want to hold them to under 20. I do too. I think 13 is uh, a reasonable amount of points. You know, the defense lets up one scoring drive. Maybe we just don't do much. We give them decent field position. They're able to get one chunk play. Bada bing, bada boom. But uh, <laughs> Troy... What a savage. Uh, and, and then, yeah, like, I, I think I think the offense has a little too much. I'm mainly talking about Saquon there to completely quiet them. They'll get, you know, position a couple times, look at some field goals. But, uh, yeah, I think under 20 is pretty reasonable. And if they score more than 20, I'll be disappointed in our defense. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat there. I, I, I think, honestly, if they score more than 10 – I'd, I'd probably be upset. I think this might be a three field goal game. I might be a nine, a little nine spot by the by the Giants. I I, I don't think they have the, the ability to kind of push the ball down the field. Um, if if the Ravens really decide to to shut down Saquon, I think they can. They they're they're better run defense team than the stats look because they've been playing these light boxes. You know they playing these cover two shells. You know cover four. They've been letting teams run because they don't want to have let up those big plays over the top. But the Giants aren't a threat to really hit you over the top. So you, you can afford to have another guy in the box take away and, you know, that, that threat of the run game. And frankly, you know, watching last week's game, like Saquon, he had a couple big runs, but he was also bottled up quite a good bit by the Packers. Like he didn't put up a huge amount of yards. And the one big run he had was out of the Wildcat. I think if you're, you're disciplined on, on that, I think it's really going to keep them from, you know, putting up long drives. I think they're not going to have explosive plays. And I think the Ravens can really shut them down on defense. Guys, in the comments for Garnett, especially Hendo, if you're in here, I want to hear your opinion on this too, buddy. Yeah, like, uh, like Gabe really threw down the gauntlet, man. He's looking for no more than 10 points. I'm saying no more than 20 points. Uh, let me know in the comments, fellas. Garnett, what are your thoughts on this, sir? Total points my, for the Giants. Uh, so I wanted to curse because I was right there with Ferg, you know, Gabe, you know, on that. Like, I'm right there with him. Like, fuck, I'm like, F yeah, I'm right there with you, Ferg. Like literally, you know, we this defense has something to prove. Like uh, this defensive front, they got a little bit. Uh, I'll say, in my opinion, they got a little humiliated going against uh, P Ryan and uh, Mixon. Thank God, Cincinnati stopped running the ball because they was literally gutting us. And I think you know, a little film study from them gonna get them a little pissed off and think about like, dude, we stopped Saquon, we got it. You know, I'm just in the bag. So. I feel like, you know, we'll hold up. It would be disrespectful if we let them score more than 10 points, like uh, Gabe said, man. These just stop Saquon, we win. It's like, I'm just straight up honest. We obviously, you know, Daniels can run out there too, but if we, we if we can punch them in the mouth before they punch us in the mouth, we, we asserted dominance. So we're good. Yeah. You know, uh, and this transitions perfectly into the Giants' rush offense, second in yards per game, second in yards per carry. The Ravens' rush defense, 12th in yards per game, but that's just because people are having to throw on us a lot because of the score and being behind. Um, 25th, we're allowing 5.0 yards per carry. And, Alec, the part that really disappointed me about this Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati game we just played, Lamar throws the interception, and the Bengals say to themselves, this is our chance. How are we going to do it? We're just going to outman the Ravens, smack these Ravens right in their mouth, Drag their linebackers for a few extra yards. Let's pull together, fellas, and let's take the Ravens' manhood. And SOB, they did it and made it a close game. It hurts my heart. I know it hurts others' hearts out there as longtime Ravens fans. For the longest time, it was like, 
I don't care what these dudes got. They're kind of fancy weapons, but they ain't coming in here and running the ball on us. They sure ain't running over Ray Lewis. They don't want to see Terrell Suggs. They don't want to see Deloti Nada. Uh, we're going to beat the, the you-know-what out of them, whether we win or lose the game. And here we are, you know, against the Saquon Barkley now. I question that part of our team. Like, can we uh, nut up and stop the run? Just going to say it, G. Well, the thing, too, is, like, I feel like, Ravens of the past, you know, they had impact, they would go backwards. But now it's like they impact and they go forwards, you know, <laughs> that's an extra yard or two. And I, I hear you on that. I it's different though, man. It's just a different NFL. Uh Clay Campbell's talking about today when it comes to like uh rushing the quarterback, uh quarterback and how they have to be careful. You know, they can't I just feel it's a different game and they they're they optimize for different things now. So that's what we're seeing. This run defense not be quite as good. So I don't know. I think it, it, it's a, a product of the times as much as it is. Like, is there a defense that's like truly dominant run defense anymore? Like when you talk about how the Ravens are, is there a defense in the league right now that's, that's playing at that level? I don't know, but in 2021, it was the Ravens in 2020. It was the Ravens. I, I, like, the bills. I what are the bills at right now? Yeah, they're up there and everything. Like I ain't going to pull up all the stats, but that's fair. That's fair. I can't, yeah. I can't just give the pass on you know, watching number six get dragged all over the field and Josh Bynes not getting there and be like, oh, well, it's just because of the way the game's played. Nah, man, Cincinnati decided to run the ball down our throat and, and drove our guys off the ball, and it just hurt. So, Gabe, this running game, give me a Saquon Barkley prediction here, bro. Like, total yards, rushing yards, yards per carry. Can we stand up? Uh, can we can we lower that 5.0 yards per carry allowed that we have on the season? Or are we just going to have to deal with it? I think so. I think they can. Um, I, I think you can hold him to probably 60, 70 yards total. He's probably going to run it 20 times. I, I, I think that's in this team, but that, that is, you know, an approach specific thing. And it's, it depends on what they do in terms of bringing an extra guy into the box. If they, if they want to do that, if they really want to key on Saquon and say, we're going to take that away. I think they can do that. And I think they can be dominant in that. Um, you know, I think they're better on the edge now that they got JPP, you know, he's, he's a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger, um, having him out there, I think, helps. In the, in the I think in the first couple of weeks, they were actually, it was a little bit of off tackles where they're, they're getting hurt. Um, recently, it's more of like up the middle, but I think that's also because they've been playing, you know, with only six guys in the box, and that, it's hard to. And like I said that for the Ravens, when the Ravens are running the ball, if you're you're seeing six guys in the box, you know, you're you have a numbers advantage. So I, I think that's something that you know they'll keep in consideration in this game. Maybe play a little bit more, um, like big nickel as opposed to three cornerbacks, bring extra safety on there. Um, you know, a few things like that you can do to help you out in, in the personnel to, to combat some of the, the heavy run schemes that they're playing, the Giants have been doing. So I think that's, that's where I'm seeing them not actually get blown up by Saquon. But hopefully I don't I don't have to, you know, eat, eat my words there. But that, that's my prediction. To Garnett, big, big predictions by Mr. Ferguson. Under 10 points. Barkley 50, 60, 70 yards on 20 carries. Like, man, I, I wish I could be with Gabe here, but I feel like Saquon's going to break 100 no matter what. Like, you talking mm. about breaking 100 total yards or break 100? I don't yards? know, bro. I don't know if he's going to have 90 or 110, but like, and 20 receiving, like, that's their whole offense, bro. Like, if we shut, if we shut Saquon down to 60 yards, I'd like, I don't see how they're going to score on us, period. Like, they, they might get a return touchdown or a turnover. Like, is Gabe too high? Am I too – what's going on? Am I too pessimistic? What's going on here, G? I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm in, a, in a weird, you know, connect with myself, man. I think – I don't know. Like, for me, if we can hold total – I'm going to just say all-purpose yards. Just total yards for, uh, for Saquon. If we can hold them under one – I'll say 130, just total. Total, like 130. I think that'd be a good balance for us, man. Um, Cause we know that's the offense. Like literally, we just, you know, I'm not gonna be the dead horse, man. But Sea Biscuit gotta get it, bro. Uh, there's nobody there. Like literally, there's nobody. It's just Saquon, bro. This is like us going against a high school team. All you gotta do is stop one guy. But that's a bad guy. He's a like, that's a bad mother sucker over there, bro. So, but and again, we got dogs. And I'm like, this is a perfect test. For a team that's been struggling to go against a running, uh, run-heavy team, so this is this is basically the per perfect situation for us to get our you know our swagger back and stop it a run to me. 
There you go. So we're not going to spend a ton of time on this Giants pass offense. You can see the numbers. The Daniel Jones and company, 154 passing yards a game, next to last. Uh, yards per attempt, next to last. Only three passing touchdowns in five games for the Giants. Uh, the Ravens pass defense. All of a sudden, bro, it came down from that two a game where we gave up 450. We were averaging over 300 yards a game. Here we go. We face Josh Allen and Joe Burrow and hold those guys down. Still 32nd in the league with that number. Uh, as far as yards per game, the, the raw number has been to, uh, totally dropping. We're now in the middle of the pack in yards per attempt. We also have 11 sacks on the season. So I don't think there's much. I don't think we really need to talk about the Giants passing game. Like, geez, they got Richie James and Darius Slayton. Is there is there, are, are there two receivers? Like, there's really not a lot to go for them. So we're going to come up on final thoughts time here. Um, Alec, I'm going to start with you and with the sergeant. Final thoughts as we head into this Sunday's game against the Giants. You, know, you can talk about where the team sits emotionally. You can talk about what to expect from this game. Take it away, Mr. Paulianis. And once again, thank you for all your help filling in for Ashley. We hope to have Ashley back next week. She has power back down there. So now she just got to get her room and everything else back together, and she'll be back with her older brothers here. That sounds good to me. Well, thanks for having me on. I say uh, kind of my normal take on this. I want to see two, four and two teams after this game. I want to see the Ravens come out healthy and uh, that's it. Like I, I honestly don't want to have too many takeaways. I don't want to be looking at the film afterwards and be like, Oh, this guy's great or this guy's bad or whatever. Like, I don't care if we learn nothing from this game. I just want to win and get out without any injuries. That would be perfectly fine by me. Thank you. Go ahead, go ahead Mr. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I think um, obviously health is, is key here. And, and we talked a little bit earlier about playing in, in the Meadowlands, and that's, that's a scary proposition. Um, we had two guys go down week one there. We don't want to have that happen again. So we're pr crossing fingers, knocking on wood for health. Um, but I, I would say that you know this is a game I think the Ravens have a chance to come out and really put a stamp on it. I think there are some guys who want to show Wink, you know, you know, we, we are we are still the Ravens defense. You know, you're not our coordinator anymore, but there's still some, some feelings there. You know, they want to come out and, and and be proud about about that. And they don't want to let this, you know, this Giants offense run all over them. So I think there is a little bit of pride on the line. And I think the other side of the ball is true as well. You know, the Ravens offense, they say, you know, you used to be our coordinator. You know what we're doing. We're going to come at you and we're going to win anyway. So I, I think this is a game that the Ravens win by two scores. I, I'm going to call it 24-9 right now. I, I don't think I don't think the Giants are going to get in the end zone. And I think it's going to be a game. It's like, okay, this is this is the Ravens football that we're used to. They're a better team. They showed their better team the entire time. They played smart. They had a good game plan. They executed it. And, you know, they're a better team for it. So that, that's what I'm looking for. Hey, real quick question. So what is our success going against previous defensive coordinators right now? I know DP's put a licking on us at one point in time. <laughs> It's funny, Garnett, because we don't see it a lot. And I went on a tirade on Justin P's show. Man, shoot, Justin. We go, we're in a discussion there. I hope Justin's still here. Um, shout out to Talking Ravens Every Day with Justin P. Hey, hey, there he is. Got a picture of his podcast there. Brother, I'm sorry I didn't get to you earlier. I hope you're still there. Um, this thought of nepotism, Garnett, before I even answer your question, because I don't have an answer. Bro, Mike McDonald got promoted from within, like just about every other Ravens coordinator did. Like Jim Harbaugh was the recipient of the nepotism. We lent him to Michigan for one year to get a little experience, but he's been a Raven for eight years before that. Like Chuck Pagano, like Mike Nolan, like uh, other guys that I'm forgetting, bro. Like he just got promoted from within the system. So like, like our defensive coordinators tend to stay is what I was getting at, uh, G. Like, P's left, but retired, and then came back. But it seems like our guys have gotten head coaching jobs. Remember, that, you know, like Pagano and, and Nolan and uh, Singletary and guys like that. Marvin going on. Marvin Lewis, yeah, head coaches. Jack Del Rio as well. Jack Del Rio. I mean, he was the Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. It, yeah, it is, man. Like I said, I was very pounding the table for a guy like uh, Chris Richards. You know that had big time success with uh you know the Legion of Boom with big personalities whatever, just that that's a whole another topic by itself man. But no, the reason I brought that up because the fact that like literally just is 
I wonder because like we see us play against we see who we play against the Tennessee Titans where we went against our old I don't know I think no 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 we had a close sacks uh, with Wink that one game was it twelve or thirteen sacks when we played Tennessee yeah against Tennessee yep against Tennessee yeah. yeah so I'm just trying to figure out who what coordinator was that over there that we played against that we did that too but anyway I just I'm just curious about you know just you know the the the, the the numbers wise of you know defensive coordinators are going against their old teams and the success rate. But anyway, uh, you know, not to pull a Jimmy Smith, but what what did you ask? What was the question? It's your final thoughts, bro. Like just get to something. Oh, final Give me something. Thoughts. Okay. We I don't know if y'all remember minutes. that. I don't know if y'all remember that in Jimmy Smith's press conference we was like just forgot the question. But anyway, but um yeah my final thoughts I think we just go out there man it's a business trip. I think the defensive line got something to prove. I think the secondary is going to – like I said, I think Pepe is going to get one uh, interception. That's just my, my – I'm just throwing it out there, shoot my shot. But I think there's going to be a couple, you know, balls where it's just going to, you know, sell out from, from Daniel Jones just trying to make something happen, you know, in dire needs. And we just – we uh, we capitalize on it. I do think DuVernay and then the, the tight end game is going to have a little success and hopefully get the running game going, man. That that that. Other than Lamar, Gabe said it perfectly. It shouldn't we have to we shouldn't have to rely on Lamar all the time to bail us out, especially this early in the season and basically starting the second uh, uh, you know fiscal year or the second quarter of the year, I should say. Like I'm not trying to burn your quarterback out so early, man. That's that's my biggest thing because we're gonna need him in the long haul. But yeah, man, I think we're gonna, we're gonna handle business, do what we need to do in New York, and just get out of there, get out of meth life. I don't call it meth life; I call it meth life. Because it's just it's horrible out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I live in that part of Baltimore myself, uh, Garnett. Um, not to stereotype myself too much, but you could probably you could probably tell by my appearance. Bro. Um, yes, we have issues out here, sir. Um, yeah. My final thoughts are, Garnett, I, I think what you're saying about Lamar and what, you know, building off of Gabe is happening. Like we saw it last game. We're not, and then we saw it in the Jets game, bro, where everybody's like, why isn't Lamar running? Why is it, you know, he's trying to prove he's a, like trying to make it into something bigger than it is, which is why run our quarterback when we have all these other weapons? Why are we trying to wear ourselves out against the Jets team that can't score against us? Why are we exposing our quarterback to all that? Let him just go back and operate the offense. And then we saw it last week when we needed him to use his legs to win the damn game. He did. And I think that that's a great way to do it, Garnett and everybody. Like, hold Lamar's legs back. See what you can do without it. And then when you need Lamar's legs to take over a game or to swing momentum before the half, you spread everybody out, like Gabe said, three, four receivers, and run that read option in a light box. And, whoa, all of a sudden, one missed tackle. and Lamar Jackson is 20 yards downfield automatically. Lamar, stop tripping over your own dudes, okay? This has been two <laughs> years now. Um, you know, I can't run like Lamar Jackson. Close. I'm close. I'm more like a Barry Sanders. But if I did have a critique of Lamar, it's stop trip, stop going so fast and tripping over people, bro. Like I feel like Lamar would have had like four extra touchdowns in his career if he didn't trip over his own guy, like just moving so fast. What a beautiful runner, beautiful player. Uh just love Lamar. So wanted to throw in a cheap shot at the man himself. But yeah, I'm I'm feeling confident on this game. I'm more along the lines of what Alex said. Get out of there with a W. Get out of there healthy. Who said it in here? We're not going to learn anything uh, against this Giants team. Um, you know, we could beat them by 20, and then everybody's going to yawn. We could beat them by one, and it's going to be like, oh, why we only win by one? Like, I'm not even going to get into all that. Let's just get out of there with the win, and let's get out of there as healthy as possibly can on that godforsaken turf that has just taken some uh, – took Kyle Fuller from us, bro, this year already took Sterling Shepard from the Giants. So with that, I want to say thank you to Gabe Ferguson from the Situation Room. Catch him and Jordan Kill. Thank everybody in here. Love the comments, man. You guys make the show. Give us stuff to talk about. I have the time Alec and Garnett will tell you, we can't even get to everything on our sheet because – we let our, our, our viewers drive y'all. The family drives this conversation for the most part. We're just here to comment on it and try to give a game preview and the film study. Um, we love you all. We really love you all. Catch us next week. Uh, Ashley, fingers crossed, should be back. Not going to count our chickens, but we'll have our girl back. Football is family. Love my football family. Want to thank my football family. 
And with that, everybody, say goodbye to our beautiful people out there. All right, man. Say goodbye. If you don't know what the situation rule looks like, it looks like this on the app. If you got Apple. Shameless Thank plug. you, Garnet. Thank yeah. you. Right. Love it. Oh, Love wait, a shout also, out. Wait, 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 my bad. I got to do one more. I want to be that dude. And then also... This what one winning podcast. Wow, like look at that. I got I to gotta share the love, baby. Got you know football family. I can't preach and not do it, right? <laughs> if I can share one more thing too, Lamar Jackson went to the best Greek restaurant. Well, one of the best Greek restaurants. Alec, no, bro. What he did? I'm telling you, he's gonna be. He might have a great game because of it. Alec, that is our Greek restaurant. Remember when you gave to my uh, what was it, Venmo, <laughs> and you got all nosy. That's our ethnic Greek restaurant that's literally <laughs> – look, man, I didn't want to bring this up. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. My son goes to this Greek restaurant with his girlfriend on Sunday. Lamar goes to it on Monday. Garnett, it's a hole in the wall, bro. Like, it is not a fancy restaurant. Like, somebody on the Ravens told him about this place. So now my wife is kind of kindly harassing him. Because I get the Greek gyro, gyro, for those who don't know how to say it. Correctly. I get the, the pork gyro, bro. And they all get their special get. Uh, so now we want to know, like, if Lamar orders the pork gyro, bro. It's it's on. You know what I mean? He gets what I like. So we're all fighting for bragging rights, man. It's so funny you brought that up, bro. Like, he, Lamar, like, my son missed him by one day. Lamar went there on Monday night. Yeah, my cousin was there when he was there. Yeah, it was crazy. Dude, my son's going to be so upset. We're all hoping he <laughs> ordered what we ordered, which is like the most pathetic but funny thing in the world, bro. Like, Yeah. And they asked well, the owners what Lamar got, and the owners would not say. So like, I feel like they're ordering more of that stuff because when they announce what Lamar <laughs> got, well, everybody's going to roll up and order it. <laughs> See, Alec, you had to do that, man, with the Greek reference. But yeah, Lamar, like 10 minutes down the street from my house, man, it pissed me off like, Man, will Andy Isabel play boogie down? Nah, man, I don't think so. He's going to have to work his way on the team probably. Uh, maybe if Bateman doesn't play, but I kind of don't see him passing uh, Wallace, Prochet, Robinson, and Bateman as the active receivers. So, All right, fellas, you got me to go in an extra three minutes there on three. <laughs> Love it. Love great it. food. <laughs> Bitch, man. Lamar was at our spot where we order food from and sit home, dude, order it. Like that's, they're that close. They're our neighborhood. Oh, did Lamar's you just curse? Did you just curse my man? Did I? I might oh. have. Not team keep it clean anymore. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. Not the bad guy anymore. Am I? Good night, y'all. Have a good night. <laughs> Love y'all. See ya. Garnett, you.